Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the Covenant Highways of Life. Congratulations. Excited to be in his presence this morning. Winners everywhere. Lift up your hands. Lift up your voice. Magnify the name of the Lord. Give him glory. Give him praise. What a joy and privilege to be in his presence this morning. Thank him for his faithfulness. Thank him for his goodness and thank him for his loving kindness. Father, we have come with a heart of gratitude to say thank you. From the depth of our heart, with the whole of our heart, we give you thanks and praise. Lift up your voice. Appreciate him. What a joy to be in his presence this Sunday. Magnify his name. Celebrate him. Appreciate him. Father, we have come into your presence with a heart of gratitude to give you all the glory, give you all the honor, give you all of covenant days of open doors. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we celebrate you. We magnify your name. We give you all the praise. We exalt you. We appreciate you. From the depth of our heart, we are grateful to you. Now lift up your voice and ask the Lord to visit you in this service in the name of Jesus. It is stored in the series. The same power that brought Jesus out of the grave on the third day in the name of Jesus will open unusual doors for everyone in his presence this morning in the name of Jesus. Spiritual doors shall be opened. Financial doors shall be opened. Marital doors shall be opened in the name of Jesus. Ministerial doors shall be opened in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Carrier doors shall be opened in the name of Jesus. Father, send your word like never before. Speak through your servant even this in, the, in all of the services, in the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and declare, Lord, I design an encounter with your word that will open doors for me. It is also an anointing service. Lord, by the anointing, let every yoke of delay, stagnation, limitation be destroyed in my life. Now lift up your voice, lift up your hands and give him glory. Because the same you that came into the service is not the same you that is living the service. There are days and there are certain days. Today indeed will be that certain day in your life. Lift up your voice, lift up your hands, give him glory. For in Jesus' mighty, matchless name we have prayed. A loud and resounding amen. I know God has been good to you and you have your testimonies. Please make your way to all of the major entrances of the tabernacle and document your testimonies. Let's put our hands together for the Lord as we welcome the Faith Tabernacle Choir. Somebody lift up your hands one more time this morning and appreciate the King of Kings. Worship His Majesty. There is no like unto Him. He is the King of Glory, the one who reigns forever. Hallelujah. Let the living water flow over my soul. Let the Holy Spirit come and take control in every situation. That has drawn all my heart and all my cares and bonds unto you. I come, let the living walk.
Somebody put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody rejoice. Given me the oil of gladness, the garment of praise instead of mourning, a shining crown instead of ashes, glory in the place of his name. My God has given me.
to give the mighty God a mighty shout of hallelujah. Woo! Amen. Please clap your hands and take your seat unto the Lord. Amen. What a joy this wonderful morning. I'd like to, on the behalf of God's servant, welcome each and every one of us to this third in the series of our covenant day of open door. That's how the doors will be opening for you and they'll be clapping for you this week. It's also our special monthly anointing service and we shall be calling ourselves to worship in this first service from Psalm 47 verses 1 to 9 and we shall read responsively. I begin. Oh, clap your hands. All ye people, shout unto God with the voice of trial. Now, verse 2, let's go. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. God is going up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. And all of us together, verse 9, the princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the heart belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. And that's what he will do in your life this morning. He shall be greatly exalted. Another big clap for the Lord right now. Praise the Lord. Please pay attention to the Faith Tabernacle announcement for today, Sunday, May 21st, 2023. Number one, praise the Lord. Please be reminded that we are all expected to continue to follow up on all the harvests from the prophetic weeks of harvest, ensuring that they attend both Sunday and midweek services, WSF meetings, the Believers Foundation class, and partake in water baptism. Remember, God who sees your tireless labor in secret will reward you openly. Number two, praise the Lord. Believers Foundation class BFC for all new converts and all new members holds tomorrow Monday. Please note that this can either be online at the address stated bfc.wfcww.org or live at any of our BFC centers across Lagos, Otta, and Environs. Details on the closest location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via SMS. The time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number three, good news. The online sales of admission forms into Faith Academy Network of schools for GSS 1 supplementary admission and GSS 2 transfer admission for 2023-2024 session commences on Monday, 22nd May to Sunday, 2nd July 2023. Interested parents and guardians are to please visit the EC's official website. That is www.ecl fcww.org for the purchase of forms. Note that the scheduled examinations date for two classes, GSS 1 and GSS 2, is Saturday, 15th July 2023, while the interview date is Saturday, 5th August 2023. Number four, good news. Water baptism holds this coming Saturday at all our facilities across Lagos and Ottawa where we have baptistries. All, both young and old, 
who are yet to be baptized in water by immersion, since they believed, are required to partake of this vital kingdom mystery. Remember, to come with your change of raiment and the time is 7.30 a.m. Number five, praise the Lord. There is no doubt that we are all being visited by God in this season. Therefore, send your testimonies to testimonies at davidoedekoministries.com or testimonies at lfcww.org. Number six, Covenant Hour Prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday in Kenanland and all our designated locations across Lagos and Ota. The time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number seven, praise the Lord. Midweek communion service holds this coming Wednesday, both in Canaan land and at all our zonal fellowship centers in Lagos, Otter, and Environs. Remember, we shall be waiting upon the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. The time is 6 p.m. Number eight, Winner Satellite Fellowship, our house-to-house -house fellowship, holds this Saturday at our various WSF centers across Lagos and Otter. Remember that we shall be praying for one another. Invite a neighbor to partake of this fellowship time. Don't miss it for anything. The time is 5 to 6 p.m. Finally, number nine, praise the Lord. Next Sunday at the Faith Tabernacle shall be our final part of our covenant day of open doors in the month of May. I thought somebody celebrated the Lord. It shall also double as our end of month special Thanksgiving, marriage, and children dedication service. In this service, God shall not only be showing us how to secure open doors in our journey, but how to keep the doors of favor open to us all through life. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Come along with your converts, invitees, and other loved ones. We shall be holding four services. The times, 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m., 9.50 a.m., and 11.45 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Right now, it is testimony time. Give God mighty praise. Please listen to these documented testimonies and be blessed. Healed of liver, kidney, and heart disease via the anointing oil. Celebrate the Lord. In January 2022, my husband had a stroke, kidney, and liver disease. He was at the point of death. For three weeks, he was in the ICU. Thereafter, we were referred to another hospital in the Koyi for heart surgery. When we got there, I was told his chances of survival were slim. However, before he was taken to the theater, I bathed him with the anointing oil and told God I must return home with my husband. Before they went into the theater, the doctors insisted that they check his kidney and liver again to avoid mistakes. Lo and behold, they could not find any kidney or liver issues. Give God praise. They did the test again, and we are confused because the kidney, liver, and heart were working perfectly. As such, the surgery was canceled. Celebrate the Lord. I was shocked to my bone marrow because the whole part of his body that was paralyzed came alive and became active. For the first time in two months, my husband stood up to heal himself without a wheelchair. Are you celebrating God? Now he is healed and keeps getting stronger by the day. Truly, the mystery of the anointing oil is real. To God be all the glory. The testifier is Adebowale Messi. Somebody give God mighty praise. <laughs> Number two, supernatural change of story via prophetic instruction. Give God praise. I came to Lagos with nothing to wear, and life was not easy. I came to this church towards the end of that year, and I got a prophetic direction. Bishop David Oedipo said, we should ask God questions and wait for answers. Then I asked, Lord, what do you want me to do with my life in the coming year? Then I heard him say, son, what do you have in your hand? I replied, I had my driver's license. 
After the event, someone bought a car for me from an online taxi which I drove for a month. Are you giving God praise? In the process, I met a human resource personnel who gave me another driving job. After a year of working with them, I was given an award and was promoted to a free department. Give God mighty praise. Last week, I was confirmed as the manager in the administration department, the largest web hosting company in West Africa. Mighty God, give him praise. Now I sit with executives to deliberate decisions. Also, I got a job with a foreign company as a regional manager. I used to give God praise. I return all the glory to God, and the testifier is Metusela at Tagbu. For this great mighty testimony, give God mighty praise. If that hand is for Jesus, make it bigger. He's worthy of praise. This morning, it's my privilege to welcome some special people into the service. If today is your first time worshiping at the Faith Tabernacle, may I ask that you please stand on your feet in God's presence and remain standing. Give Jesus a big hand as these precious people rise everywhere. I thought you were clapping for Jesus as they stand everywhere. Our God is worthy of all the praise. Please remain standing. Our officials will put into your hand the welcome package. Along with it, you'll be given a card that you need to fill. And as soon as you receive those two items, please take your seat and immediately begin to fill that card in the course of this welcome. Ensure you receive those two items before you are seated and begin to fill that card in the course of this welcome. I want to specially welcome you today on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained by God as a mountain of divine intervention where every issue that has defied solution can be supernaturally perfected. Our turnaround God has been at work in this commission for over four decades, surprising members of this church with unimaginable testimonies as they believe. Since God is no respecter of persons, expect the turnaround God to visit you also upon this mountain as you believe. I want to welcome you today to this turnaround family. I may today be your entry into the realms of divine intervention that will result in the delivery of your long-awaited testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe, say a loud amen. amen. Therefore, to all our first-time worshipers, we say, welcome home. Give Jesus a big, big hand. May I ask one more time for our first-time worshipers to please rise for a word of prayer and blessing. All our first-time worshipers, rise one more time on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Bow your heads as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for these precious people that you have brought by your mighty hand. You brought them here for a blessing. And therefore, today we declare each one of them blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever concerns they may have left behind before coming into your presence today, we ask of you today, Lord, that you will turn every one of those concerns into open testimonies. You have brought them on this covenant day of open doors. Let every closed door of life and destiny be opened on their behalf today. Above all, for any one of these precious people that are yet to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, we declare that today for each one of them shall be the day of their salvation. We thank you because we know you have done it already. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believes say loud, amen. amen. Please, you may be seated. Ensure your forms are completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Once again, you are welcome and God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand. Let somebody shout it loud. Hallelujah. It's offering time. Can you say believe in amen to that? Therefore, this is the right time for us to properly package all our financial commitments between you and God. That includes your tight 10% of God's increases upon your life. 
the worship seed, and any other kind of seed you have purposed and you have brought today to worship God. Please make sure they are all clearly labeled. Remember, you can give in cash. But in case you are writing check, please do so in Horn of Faith, Tabernacle, Canaan Land. You can also take advantage of any of our electronic giving channels. If you check the screen, you'll find the required information concerning that. Praise God. Let's read from the Word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 11. The Bible says, And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Let me hear the loudest. Amen. Amen. May this become the portion of every giver today. Amen. With this understanding, please rise upon your feet, take your seed in your hand, joyfully, gladly lift it up unto the multiplier God. Give him praise, give him glory, worship his majesty. It's out of the abundance of that which he has given unto us that we have come today. Let him see your hand, let him hear your voice. Thank him and thank him some more. Father, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please keep your seat lifted. Heavenly Father, with gratitude in our hearts, we have come with financial seed in our hand today to worship you. Let our seed be acceptable. For every title today, Lord, let the remainder be meaningful. To everyone worshiping you with any other form of seed today, according to your word, let financial doors begin to open. This hand shall never lack again. Yeah. Welcome to your season of financial plenty. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah. Loud and believing, amen. Yeah. Please, you may take your seat comfortably, cast your seat with joy, and let's welcome the faith tabernacle choir as the minister. Yeah. 
Shall we give the Lord a great clap offering this morning? It shall be the dawning of a new day for every one of us. Yeah. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. When that becomes a cry of your soul, then it opens your eyes. Lift up your two hands and pray that prayer of the psalmist. Psalm 119, verse 18. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy Lord Jesus. In Jesus precious name we have prayed. Amen. That which we have heard, which we have seen, which our eyes have looked upon, and which our hands have handled, declare we unto you. You first hear, then you see, you look well to see well enough, and then you are in command. In the precious name of Jesus, whatever anyone lacks here today to get you on this path of the supernatural, may each one's ears be open to hear, yeah. and may each one's eyes be open to see. Yeah. And may you end up having it in command. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The work of the house of the Lord ceased by force and by power of the enemy. Ezra chapter 4, 23 to 24. And then the prophets came forth and began to prophesy. And there was a staring. And the building of the house of the Lord began. And there were the prophets helping them. May you receive the help ordained for you today. Every true prophet is sent as a helper, not as a usurper. No true prophet looks for what anyone has, what any man has. Every true prophet looks for what to add to every man. And that's the kind of thing we have in our ministry. Prophets are not sent to people to help them. They are sent to help whomsoever they are sent to. All through scriptures. Moses was sent to Egypt. 
to build them out of captivity. Elijah was in the house of the widow of Zarephath for her survivor in farming and to rescue her son that the devil killed. Elijah was in the house of Shunammai woman by the invitation of the man and his wife and her dead womb opened up. The devil said, you have a child, I'll kill the child. The child came back to life. Prophets all through ages are sent as helpers to whomsoever they are sent. True prophets don't look for human help. They are help from above. So when you see me crying, I'm crying to see you helped. You have gone around collecting prayers and all. It's high time you took command. It's high time you took command. By the end of this month, no one here shall remain a prayer project. No one here shall remain a prayer project. Yeah. Heavenly Father, send us your help today yeah. as individuals yeah. and move us forward. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand and get seated. Egan was sent to me to help me, Kennedy Egan. And I was open enough to receive the help. Help my faith. To grow. And got the mantle of truth of faith from him. There is no help I rendered him. He was sent to help me. Dear Lord, one was sent to open my ears to hear the voice of the Spirit. And what an asset that is to my life today. Kenneth Copeland was sent to open my eyes to the secret of kingdom prosperity. And what a blessing to my life and to this ministry today. Best in the house I was sent to embolden my stand for God. And what a blessing that is today. I got one blessing from each of them, sir. Please position yourself to assess help. God brought you here because you need help. And he sends his help through his prophets to bail you out of unwanted situations. Somebody from being a driver, regional director or manager of your company, employed as a driver, and just began to go by the help of God. God will help you. Amen. Next Sunday, we are not just talking about how to secure open doors, but how to sustain open doors for life. How to enjoy of favor for life, and you shall have it. That's the last part of our open door um, month, and shall be the beginning of Umbodos for your life. Yeah. Unlocking the supernatural. Our anchor scripture is John chapter 3 and verse 8. Then when blue it, where it listed and you hear the sound thereof, or you can't tell where it's going or where it's coming from, and so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. To be born of the Spirit means to be born again. John chapter 3, verse 3 to 8. It means we're born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. But I said to you, you must be born again. So, 
Every born again child of God is born as a sign and a wonder to his world. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18. I and the children whom the Lord has given to, to, unto me, they are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. The supernatural is simply a product of our obedience of faith. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. The supernatural will be the end product. Feed the water pots with water, I told them, at the canal of Galilee, and as they did, it was turned to wine. Go to the pool, call Siloam, and wash. He told a man born blind. He went and washed and came back saying, Whosoever has my commandment and keeps it is the one that loves me. And if he loves me, he will be loved for my father. And I will love him. And I will manifest myself to him. John 14, 21. So the, man of, the manifestation of the supernatural is a product of our obedience of faith. John 1, 8. The man went, washed, and came back saying. John 2, 3 to 11. They feed the water pots with water and the whole stuff was turned to wine, obedience of faith. But the knowledge of who we are is what determines what we can do. And that knowledge can be acquired from the world. The knowledge of all, I mean, the vision of all is as a book written And give it to a man that's not learned. Read, I pray thee, and look at God's plan for your life. He says, I'm sorry, I'm not learned. Give it to a man that's learned. He says, Look, it is sealed. I can't see it. You have to be born again to see it. Who am I? You have to be born again to see it, sir. But to them who are born again, it's given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to them that are without, all these things are parables. Interestingly, you can be in church for 10 years and not know the meaning of new birth. New birth is not about being in church. It's about being in Christ. New birth is not about religious activities. It's about a new way of life. Working in the newness of life. A new birth is only accessible by genuine repentance, which is missing today. Genuine repentance. From the things that displease God in our lives. Genuine repentance. And accepting Christ as Lord and Savior, then we are born again. We begin to now grow in the faith to build a stand in God. Now the big question is, who am, who am I? One I'm redeemed as an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 17. Every child of God, if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified with him. Every child of God is an heir of God. Why? He's a child of God and he's the king of kings. So it's an heir. Our father is the king of kings. So it's an heir. I just returned from home yesterday. We were doing remembrance of our forefathers in our royal dynasty. And that began 1908. My own maternal grandfather reigned in 1918. Praise God. I mean, we had a very great time. This is the king of kings and the lord of lords. So we have a kingdom royal blood in us. So we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Praise God. Joint heirs with Jesus. That means we share same 
authority as Christ when we are born again. We only have to grow and develop our, our spiritual life to operate in that realm. It's in us, potentially. We carry that in truth. My prayer is that in the name of Jesus, every one of us will come awake to this reality. Amen. You are not here to struggle for survival. A son or a daughter of the president walks with some degree of liberty in his father's country. Your father is the king of all the earth. So you have some immunity on the earth. So much has been said earlier. You are only in this world. You are not of this world. So you have heavenly immunity about your life against all satanic assault. Can I have you say with me, I have been redeemed as an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Every effort to destroy Christ was impossible. There was an immunity about his life. No one took my life from me. I lay down by myself. You can't take it. I have to pay the price for the sins of the world, but I'm sure I will take it back again. And he did that resurrection. By this royal blood, accompanied with royal immunity, I declare you an indestructible entity. Yeah. Anyone that goes after you to hurt you will be hurt in your place. Yeah. That makes the supernatural our natural lifestyle in redemption. And you'll be glad to know this. We have been redeemed to command dominion over death. Mm. Death shall be grossly humiliated in these last days <laughs> as God's people begin to rise up to take their place of authority over death. In this Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, it says, I lay before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. So it's a choice. It's not, it, it can't be forced on you. It's a choice. We have the covenant right to choose to live. Someone got involved in a boat um, incident, the boat capsized. He said, Jesus, I refuse to die. A hand, invisible hand, came down and picked them above the water until the rescue boat came and put him inside and disappeared. Jesus, I refuse to die. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26. The word says, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. He says, is that not the end of time? No. Isaiah 25, verse 6 to 8. And in this mountain, there is no mountain in heaven, shall the Lord make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the leaves, a feast of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the leaves were defined. And it will destroy in this mountain the face of conference cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. There are no nations in heaven. <laughs> Go back to it. Now, he will swallow up death in victory. 
When? In this mountain. Where? Now. Come on now. <laughs> now, it will destroy the face of covering that makes you feel that death has a final say. Never. When I was 50, I tried to catalog the number of deaths I have died but not dead. <laughs> the number of deaths I had died but not dead. It will swallow up death in victory. I did a seminar in 1983 on victory over death. It's not a joke. What you don't know, you don't know. What you won't learn, you can't know. What you don't know, you pay for it. Fulfilling your days was originally captioned victory over death. People were scared to read. They were scared to read. Now, there are people here today who have never read one day in their life victory over death or fulfilling your days. They have never read it once. And it's not a common place in town. Don't find authors right on it because I mean, have they found it? I found it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I found it. If the devil can kill me, he will have killed me longest. He's tired. We belong to the kind of people that witches beg. They beg us to let them live. Amen. Amen. It's all light. Light will never run away from darkness. It's darkness that will clear the way for light. You better get lighted. Get lighted, my friend. Get lighted. You know, 1983 now, how many years is that? 40 now. Is it now 40? You may not want to say it. <laughs> Amen. Stupid death. Oh, death. Where is the sting? Oh, grave, where is the victory? The sting of death is sin, and the power of the grave is the law. Christ has abolished both. On our behalf. Come and give the Lord praise. <laughs> Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, no untimely death shall be recorded in your household again. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. For as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, himself took like took part himself, likewise took part of the same, that through death, that through death, he might destroy him that had past tense, the power of death, that is the devil. He used to have, but he lost it at resurrection. He used to have the power of death, sir. He was killing people at will. But at resurrection, he lost it. Now, and deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So he can't kill, but he can inflict with fear of death. And when the fear comes on you, death takes over. Now, it's said in animal in wild, wildlife science that every time a lion roars, and the priests get inflicted with fear, they secrete certain hormones in their bloodstream that the lion smells to know where the prey is. So fear is the bait of the destroyer. The things I greatly fear came upon me. That's what happened to Job. No matter how anointed you are, you live in fear you are a victim. And you, the only cure for fear is faith. And faith won't jump on you. You have to build it. Amen. Amen. I've seen that, though. I mean, severally. 
But there's something inside me. You are too small. Amen. No, not here. <laughs> not here. Not around here. Build up. Unless you become a victim. Build up. Build up. Build up. Does it mean that those who die don't have faith? I don't know. I'm telling you how to have it. <laughs> this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. First John 5, 4. In the precious name of Jesus, no one here will bury his children. Yeah. No one here will die young. Yeah. Can I recommend, go and grab the book, Fulfilling Your Days, and try to track the weakness of death. Amen. It's your turn. Yeah. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18. Jesus said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Satan had a lost it. Jesus got it at resurrection. Now he has it. And he's holding it in your favor. Is holding that key in your favor. Is holding that key in my favor. This assembly, the winners family worldwide, with the oldest saints in this generation. People will climb here at 120. And say, I just turned 120 last week. I want to thank God for my life. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. You believe that. How then do I unlock what I carry? We discover from scripture that the Holy Ghost is the grand commander of the supernatural. Joel chapter 2 verse 28 to 30. It shall come to pass in the last day I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the, serv the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I part my spirit. And I will show wonders in heaven. Wonders. And in the earth, and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Great days are here. Not thought these wonders I got a job. <laughs> Blood, fire, pillars of smoke. Eroding the presence of God's people. You, you step into a place and all the devils begin to shiver. The Holy Ghost came in chapter 2 of Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 3 began to blow hot with manifestation of signs and wonders and diverse miracles. The man, the crippled man at the beautiful gate got up on his feet. 5,000 men added to the church for that reason. Chapter 5, all kinds of stuff. Peter's shadow was healing the sick. Miracles, signs and wonders added much of men and women to the church. No end. The Holy Ghost the mastermind of the supernatural.
However, we must continue to desire an increase in our level of anointing. Because anointing is in levels. Anointing is in levels. We saw power came on the day of Pentecost, as God said, Acts 1 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you. So the Holy Ghost came in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. And then by Acts chapter 4, verse 32 and 33, they prayed. And with great power. So they had graduated from power to great power. That's where the church today has problem. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost 1921. Good luck. <laughs> you can imagine yourself, you fill your car. January 1, and you have not referred to now. <laughs> you want to be using the car? The car is flat. There's no more fuel. No more fuel. No more fuel. With great power, give the apostles wisdom of Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them all. They have graduated from power to great power. Mm. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Luke 4 14. And then in Luke 9, they saw the mighty power of God. He has moved from power to mighty power. Luke 9, 35. This is my beloved son. And then verse 43, they were amazed at the mighty power of God. So we, we must desire to grow in the anointing. You can imagine if I was still operating the anointing I was operating with when Jesus called me, I would be gone, 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 gone. We must endeavor to be current. Amen. Come on now. Amen. We must endeavor to be current. We must endeavor to be current. You can imagine an academic that is non-computer literate. It's of the same. Of the same. We must endeavor to be correct. They took great power to silence the opposition. And they did. And took Jerusalem by storms. We saw how Christ commanded the supernatural all the way because God gave him the Holy Spirit without measure. John 3.34. Without measure. Without measure. And if as the Father has sent us, as he sent us, he wants to bring us to that level. John 3.34, without measure. We saw the measures of the anointing in, uh, was it, Ezekiel 47, verse 1 to 5. He took me to the waters, and water gushed out from the right side of the house, where Christ is seated, because he sat at the right hand of majesty on high. And when I go, I will send him to you. So he sent the Holy Ghost. And after measuring a thousand cubits, it was to the ankle as he took me through the water. He measured another thousand cubits, it was to the knees. Another thousand cubits, it was to the waist. Another thousand cubits, it was a river that could not be passed over. Rivers to swim in. <laughs> now, unfortunately, Many of us just got to the brink of the water. That's water baptism. That's Holy Ghost baptism. The brink. Now, you need a thousand cubits to get to the ankle. And you are at the brink. You think you're already swimming. <laughs> People think they're already swimming, sir. You say, come out. The devil say, I won't come out. <laughs> it's just a 
Jesus, I Jesus, I know Paul, I know you. Can't tell me to come out. <laughs> At what level of authority? So they were casting out one devil in those days in the Lord. And the demon possessed stood up and gave one of them a big slap. You remember? One night, I took a notorious witch into the bush. We drove off into a no man's land. I've never been there myself. Whatever I tell you to do right now, begin to do it. Lie down flat! <laughs> I give some brutal instructions. I said, now stand up and go into that water. I said, I would die. I said, die now. <laughs> I said, well, why can't the devil come here to help you? Ah, he said, as long as you are here, I can't come. As long as you are here, I can't come. You are going up. Amen. You are all these people chasing you in the night and you are jumping through the river. Through, so, it's, it's enough. It's enough. You should sleep when you sleep. In the precious name of Jesus, every satanic harassment on your life comes to an end finally. Yeah. Just take responsibility. Don't wait for someone to take it for you. Take responsibility. A coach can coach a wrestler. The wrestler has to wrestle. He won't let you wrestle with him. He has wrestled before. Amen. That what made him a coach. You can't beat him again. But if you are not willing to wrestle, good luck. Lord, empower me to next level. Empower me. This level I am is not good enough. Empower me into next level. And it will. Somebody has a cartoon. I mean, what do you, uh, where they sell clothes. What do they call it, please? Boutique. In Kaduna. <laughs> It wasn't selling. I was going to the airport and said, I should please branch. So we branch. And then I touched the clothes. I said, now go. Following day, somebody came in and bought off everything. What if he has that anointing by himself? Amen. You can't be sitting down at a point and the devil just keeping you on the floor. And it's open to everybody. There's no special anointing for apostles and prophets. It's open. It's how much more we go give the Holy Ghost to them to ask him. Luke 11, 13. How much more we go give the Holy Ghost to them to ask him. Let's be committed to growth so we can stop groaning. Let's be committed to growth so as to stop groaning. Let's be committed to growth, spiritual growth, so as to stop groaning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give the Lord praise, everybody. How do I unlock what I carry? We must recognize that we have the authority to command the supernatural. Can I have you say with me, I must understand that I have the authority to command the supernatural. I must understand that I have the authority to command the supernatural. He said, go to all the world and preach the gospel. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name that I give them authority to use. They shall cast out devils. Praise God. <laughs> and they went forth and preached everywhere and God confirming his word with signs following. They were conscious that they had the authority and they went forth. But the authority to command signs and wonders is based on our commitment to serve God's interests. Ah, Luke chapter 9 verse 1. He called his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Amen. This power to, not power to keep, power to serve.
power to serve. Power to serve. Power to serve. Hmm. He gave them power and authority. You can pray for power, but authority has to be conferred. You can't pray for authority. No. It's conferred. And you know what? They went and preached and prayed. I mean, uh, preached everywhere and healing every, everywhere. They were healing everywhere, verse 6. They were healing everywhere. He sent them to preach the kingdom. And they went through the towns and uh, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. That's why signs and wonders multiply in this church. There are too many people genuinely on the go for Christ. Serving God on the prayer altar. That my daughter said concerning the husband, let his service speak for him. <laughs> and God restored his life back. Let his service speak for him. You can't be serving God and not know. You can't be having fun and not know. Let his service speak for him. And he did. Talking about serving God in terms of praying kingdom advancement prayers, going after so to the point of establishment, giving to the cause of the gospel. Many will be so spiritually empowered for wealth that the wealth will make them a surprise to themselves <laughs> by their tireless delight sum. Investment in kingdom invest, kingdom advancement opportunity. They just jump party. They are not uh, looking here and there. It suits them. My God. Colgate began his ministry, I mean his business, in UK before they had to flee to America with his father. It was a soap business. And then um, the business failed. So he ran into a Christian brother, he's a Christian too, who took him to Bible study. And there it was shown that Jacob vowed at 10% of all that God would give him. So he's turned into that covenant. Every morning now you see Colgate, toothpaste, globally, sir. Otilo. It's gone. It's gone for years. His giving led him to 80% of his profit. Come on. That's empowerment, my friend. You can't be empowered for wealth until you're empowered to give. <laughs> empowerment to give is what culminates in empowerment for wealth. You can ask me that. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's not accumulation, sir. To dry up. It's not accumulation. 1984, I told our leaders, I said, now that we're all at the same level, we understand what I'm saying. But the time is coming when someone wants to take up in the air. He said, we don't even know what they're using. He said, let me tell you what I'm using. I'm sold out to God. We were believing God for 3,000 naira. And I said, folks, if I have this money, God won't ask me for it. God won't ask me to give it. It will be out of me. But now that we're all at the same level, understand what I'm saying. I wish they did. Some didn't. They got angry. We're only about six of us in that room. But my first investment in Rural Church Building, when we launched it here, was 100 churches. Not 3,000 era now. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All our sons and daughters have their own. Life! So, so, to be angry with someone God has blessed is a cause. 
He said, I will curse him that causes thee. He, is, he doesn't need to know. He will just give you a dirty slap and your mouth will bend to one point. <laughs> when you find a man and a woman that God bless you, stay clear. Stay clear. Stay clear. Let's incur the anger of God who bless him. Stay clear. Nothing empowers like a commitment to serve God's interest on the earth. Nothing. Nothing, sir. Nothing. Authority, power is the exclusive reserve of those who are committed to serving God and his interest. Man, what the only lady who is doing a melo? Or in a jolon law, me and what be you? Me and Pian Lully phone you. Not abroad, not in broad. <laughs> God is more than enough. When He empowers you, empowers you. When God empowers you, no devil can disempower you. When God empowers a man, no devil can disempower him. All the force of hell can't stop the prosperity of this church as long as we keep on the covenant pathway. No. All these days, uh, one woman in my house. There is nobody who doesn't have a woman in his house. There's one short man in the house. There is every house. There is one short, there's one tall. So what is all those things? <laughs> when somebody stole my glory. Where did you keep it? <laughs> We didn't see the glory before, so still, you can only see what exists. Where was the glory before? That somebody stole. <laughs> but then we see the glory of God in your life. Yeah. Beginning from this season, sir. Yeah. They will not mistake you among them anymore. So authority is conferred based on our commitment to serve. You can pray for power, don't pray for authority, it won't answer. At some point, the Pharisees asked Jesus, by what authority do you do these things? I mean, you can't have authority without the enemies knowing. Matthew 21, verse 22 to 27. In Matthew 13, 34 to 36, let's see what happens. Matthew 13, 34 to 36. All these things speak Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without the parables speak he not unto them. 35. That might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables and I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. And when Jesus sent off this away, he went in and his disciples with him and declare a parable of the tears and of the field of the wheel. The good news is the difference between you and the world will be so clear <laughs> this end time because everything will be responding to you at a supernatural frequency. <laughs> You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Yeah. He said to them, go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creation. Teach them to observe what things that I command you to do. Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. You have my back as you go. I will manifest myself as you go. There is no genuine commitment to Christ and the interest of his kingdom that does not launch a believer into the realm of the supernatural. 
because of his manifest presence. He went about doing good and healing all them and prayed to them because God was with him. You are in partnership with God, you are in command. But authority is not conferred on children, but on adults. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall rest upon the shoulders of the son and of the angels of the government and of peace there shall be no end. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. An heir, when he's a child, is not different from a servant. It's under governors and tutors. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. Until the time appointed of the father. Even though he be lord of all, but he cannot take charge. He cannot be given authority until the time appointed of the father. Let's be committed to spiritual growth. Let's be committed to spiritual growth. It's what defines the level of faith that can be entrusted to us. Let's be committed to spiritual growth. That's what determines the level of authority that we can be entrusted with. You never find an adolescent on a throne in any village who went to school and came back to sit on the throne. Primary four. No. Though it be his right, but it's not grown to take it. Let's be committed to spiritual growth. Jesus operated with the conscience of, of the authority given to him by the Father. John 5, 25 to 27. John 5, 25 to 27. Verily I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man, they that hear shall live. Now, for as the Father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself. And has given him authority to execute judgment also because he's the son of man. Now, let's see John 11, 21 to 26. Jesus now began to exercise that authority. Very I say unto you, I mean, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now whatever thou shalt ask, the, ask God, God will give it thee. And Jesus said, thy brother shall live again drawing from that authority. Martha said, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the dead. Jesus said, sure up. I am the resurrection and the life. I am. It was drawing on that authority. I am. You saw a believer in me, though you are dead, yet shall he live again. And who shall live and believeth in me shall never die like men die. Believe it all this. And when he got to where Lazarus was, Lazarus come forth. Authority. What is it? He said, by now he's thinking, I said, stop that nonsense. Then I say, if you believe, you see the glory of God. Roll away that stone. Father, I thank you because you have heard me. Lazarus come forth. Authority in display. Authority in display. In the precious name of Jesus, no devil will shut your mouth when it's time to exercise authority. No devil will shut your mouth when it's time to exercise authority. Now watch. Every time you hear me say, except God has not sent me, you should know I'm drawing from the authority given me by the sender. Because when God sends a man, who can send him back? When God sends a man, who can send him back? For the Lord of us has sworn that as I have thought so that it shall come to pass, as I have purpose, so it shall stand. Who will turn him back? Daniel 4, he said, when he stretches forth his hand, who shall turn him back? Who can? That's when John Goodman chose. You'll find me saying, except God has not sent me. How dare you? Where are you coming from? (laughs) 
Jesus told me, June 24, 1996, stand for what I've called you to do. I'm with you always. Okay, what do you need? I'm with you. So I'm not talking about a man just roaming about the street. I'm talking about someone in active partnership with Jesus. I'm with you always. I saw it in the Bible and I heard it in my ears when he spoke to me. He told me what and what and what. He said, I'm with you always. And it's also with you. You only need to know it. That you are serving God, commit his presence with you. And look, I'm molesting you. He said, maintain a strong focus. June, I mean, July 15, 1996, on the commission. Behold, I am with you always. What else do you need? I've sent you, July 6, 97, as a shepherd to your generation, as you pass on this one church. The world will become your parish. For I've appointed you. I've appointed. Who can disappoint anyone God has appointed? Caution. I've appointed you to serve your generation. Not to serve your nation. Serve your generation. Your nation is just part of it. Stand over this church with me. Come and say partnership. As you begin to reap the overripe harvest of the world together. Now, you can't tell how many pastors around the world today are in this service. In preparation for their own service. To the glory of God. Amen. Amen. We had an international ministers conference just last week, or a week before. 90, minister from 92 nations registered. You know why? I have appointed you to serve your generation. You can't appoint yourself. You can't wake up and say, I'm the federal minister of a Greek. How? You have to be appointed. Now, on this covenant day of open doors, first recognize that you are redeemed to enjoy open doors as a way of life. Revelation 3, 7 and 8. And to the church in Philadelphia, right? Thus said he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts, and shuts and no man opens. What did he say? Verse 8 I know thy works. Behold, I've said before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, but hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. That's where the open door covenant is built. You have kept my word. You have not denied my name. You are not hiding your identity from nonsense. Nonsense. You are coming from church. You are hiding your Bible. What kind of lie? <laughs> you are praying. Somebody knocks at the door and says, what are you doing? I was just saying something. I was, I was talking to my wife. <laughs> they knock. Nobody answers when they call you next day. Yeah, I was praying. My God, I was praying. That's my time of prayer. Amen. You have not denied my name. You know why God likes me? You can't make me cow when it comes to Jesus. No man on this earth can make me cow. Not yesterday. Not two days ago. <laughs> Amen. No, no man. You better get openly identified. That's how to maintain an open door. You have kept my word. You have little strength, but you have kept my word. And you have not denied my name. Where are you coming from? Oh, yeah, I went to, towards Ota. I'm a bona fide winner, born bread, buttered winner. Amen. 
When God becomes your helper, no agent of death can dishelp you. From home to villages to next country, Jesus man, in out. It's enough for me. It's enough for me. The man of Galilee is enough for me. You better wake up. What are you looking for? That you put Jesus in your pocket <coughs> and you hold it like this. Oh, do you still go to church? Uh, once a while. Kilo day. Kilo Amen. 1990, a governor gave me an envelope. I said, I hope it's your money. 1990. 19 what? 90. I said, I hope it's your money. I don't need government money. He said, my honor, say, my honor. It's my money. King on what? Who can give me today what God is giving me? You have a company, you can't play in your company. What kind of company are you having? Are you the owner? God will leave it to you. They are not all Christian. How did they get there? If they are not, lead them to Christ. Are you not a winner? Every genuine winner is a soul winner. Every genuine winner is a soul winner. Lead them. Every single security man in my premises is born again, baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Ghost. What are you talking about? Ah, you said this is tough. That's how. To enjoy open doors. That's what he did, the man. The man. You have little strength, but keep my word. And never deny my name. One with God is an ever winning majority. Not a majority, ever winning. Ever winning majority. Ever winning. You are going to begin to see new things, though. Anybody that tries to shut a door against you, seven will open. At the shot of one door, seven doors will open. Now, Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 1 to 3. The anointing is one of the instruments God uses. To enforce open doors. To open impossible doors to his people. Thus said the Lord to his anointed. To Cyrus, whose right hand I have holding, To subdue nations before him. And I will lose the loins of kings. To open before him the two leaf gates. And the gates shall not be shut. Mm. Come and say the anointed. I will go before him and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. And cut in sunder the bars of iron. Now watch. And I will give him the treasures of darkness. The hidden riches of secret places. That thou mayest know that I the Lord which called thee by thy name am the God of Israel. Now that's the, that's the, the enormous power that the anointing of the Holy Ghost carries. For example, as Jesus returns to the power of the Spirit in Luke 14, 14, his fame spread abroad. Anointing opens impossible doors. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. Many of us sitting down here today, you'll be having your names called in places you least imagine. <laughs> The apostles were in hiding for the fear of the Jews. But when the Holy Ghost came on them, impossible doors began to open to them. Peter stood on the rock and 3,000 religious people turned their life to Jesus. 
one day. Next day, 5,000. Acts chapter 5, verse 28, 28, they took over the whole Jerusalem. That's the door opening power in the anointing. God gave us this land, but he used the anointing to subdue the enemies there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It shall come to pass in that day that the yoke of the wicked shall be, the body shall be taken from your shoulder and the yoke from your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed. The barriers on your way forward shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Can I hear your amen? amen. Get ready. As this oil comes on your head today, a new day dawns on your life. Amen. As this oil comes on your head today, a new day dawns on your life. Amen. It shall be to every one of us the dawning of a new day. Amen. Any devil that seeks to close a door at you, God will close a door at them. The new anointing can only be put into new wine skin. That is, a newness of life is a covenant requirement for the new anointing. You can't change level without changing your lifestyle. Proverbs 1 23. Turn ye at my reproof, and I will pour my spirit upon you. Young people, be careful. Today, sin has been redefined and justified. And so you find anointing dry young people walking the streets just guessing, guessing and goosing. Without a tourney, it's not your turn. There must be a genuine turning from the things that displease God to assess the next level anointing. My God. Luke chapter 5, verse 37 and 38. No man puts new wine into old wine bottles. <laughs> As the new wine will burst the bottles, and the wine will be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. To move anybody forward beyond his quality of spiritual life is to destroy him. And God does not tempt anybody with evil. Clean up to step up. Clean up. If you must step up, clean up. Sir. Clean up. Clean up. If you must step up, clean up. If anybody wants to step up, clean up. Next level anointing demands a thirst and a longing. Isaiah 44, verse 3 to 4. Isaiah, please, 44. Isaiah 44. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and flood upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offsprings. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. Verse 5. Go to verse 5, please. One shall say, I am the Lord. Your life will become an attraction. Another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord and so name himself by the name of Israel. That is the anointing decorates destinies that turn individuals to attraction to the world around them. Amen. Do the what? My, my God, you, you need to know how many people are listening to our messages who, who are not believers. <laughs> my God, it's a, it's a crowd of people. Amen. <laughs> crowd of people.
One top leader in this country is not a believer. He told one of his proteges, there's one man you must listen to if you want to keep your career alive, Bishop David Oed. <laughs> and he has kept faith with it. He must be in this service now, the second service. Amen. <laughs> your life becomes an attraction with new anointing. And that's you. Amen. No one shall remain a byword and a proverb in this church. Amen. As the Lord lives, God's glory on this church will reflect fully in your life. Amen. Nothing goes down in your life anymore. Amen. Your days of ups and downs are finally over. Amen. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks. Give him thanks and praise and glory. No one like our God. Celebrate him. It's the dawn of a new day. It's the dawn of a new day. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Very quickly, as we round up this morning, you are here, you are not born again yet. That's where the journey of wonders begins. If we genuinely repent today and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you'll be born again. And you become a living wonder to your world. Your days of wandering, we end. Your days of frustrations, we end. You have assurance of tomorrow. You have assurance of eternity. You want Jesus to forgive your sins this morning, wherever you are, please stand to your feet. God bless you. Please stand to your feet wherever you are. We are not coming to the front right now. Stand to your feet. I'll be praying for you right there. Where you are. Jesus is more than you can ever imagine. Stand to your feet. God bless you. And God bless you now. There are also people here this morning that need to rededicate their life to Jesus. Please remain standing. All of us who are up on our feet. Remain standing, please. I'll be praying for you in a moment. There are those who need to rededicate their life to Christ. Maybe you are once born again, but somehow there was a disconnect between you and your father in heaven. And you know it. You know the dryness in your spiritual life. You want to reconnect back to God for a brand new beginning. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet also. God bless you. You want to reconnect with your Heavenly Father for a brand new beginning. Stand to your feet. Now, all of us who are standing both for the first and second call, may I request that you bow your heads for prayers where you are. And lift up your right hand to heaven and pray this simple prayer of faith after me, saying, Lord Jesus, say it loud, Lord Jesus, save my soul. I repent of my sins today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me on the third day, you rose again to set me free from the power of sin and Satan. Today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart, Jesus, and begin to live your life through me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. By your grace, I shall serve you to the end of my life. By your grace, I shall live the overcomer's life. And by your grace, I shall make heaven at the end of my journey. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Now be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone that turns his or her life to Christ today, receive grace to be established in the faith. Amen. Receive grace to serve him to the end. Receive grace to live the overcomer's life. Receive grace to make it to heaven at the end. In the name of Jesus. For everyone who is dedicating his life to Christ today, or our life to Christ today, you'll never go back again. You'll never, never go back again. Nothing will separate you from the love of God in your life. 
in the precious name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Congratulations. 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 Please complete your forms, the slips given to you, and you also be given a card called We Love You card. Please, after the service, you submit that card to any of the new converse tent. There you will take up a pack made up of the gift from the church that will help you build your faith on a sure foundation. Also, please complete your form, your slips, and pass them on to the church officials next to you. We want to be in touch with you and be part of your joy and help us of your faith. Give us the privilege to do that. Um, also, you need to be part or to partake of the Believers Foundation class. No building can ever grow taller than the depth of its foundation. You need a sure foundation for your faith. We have Believers Foundation class that holds on Mondays, and you go for only two Mondays, and then you are fortified in your new found faith. We'll be getting in touch with you on SMS to let you know which one is closest to where you live. But if you want to take the online option, you have the uh, link out there on the screen. Um, be genuinely committed to it, and you'll be glad you did. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we all rise to our feet? Please take your bottles of oil. The word said, this shall be an holy anointing unto me, anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. So its effect is not limited to a season. It's an all-season mystery. All-season. Exodus chapter 30 and verse 31. You speak to the children of Israel. This shall be an holy anointing unto me throughout your generations. By this anointing, I command the opening of impossible doors to your life. Yeah. Every iron gate, every gate of brass, as this oil comes on your head, they are shattered before you. Yeah. The anointing makes believers of quick understanding. I therefore decree that as the oil comes upon your head, your spiritual understanding is quickened. Yeah. To grasp things of the spirit with ease. Yeah. And to be brought to the remembrance of the same when required. Yeah. May this help be everyone's portion today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now, every mark of the devil that may have come with anyone here, as this oil comes on you, the marks return to where they came from. Yeah. Everyone appointed to death, the appointment goes to the one that appointed it. Just as nothing could stand the way of this commission for 42 years, by this anointing, no gang up of hell will stand your way anymore. I pray that this anointing will turn you loose to keep serving God with all positive. Yeah. God said the Lord to his servant, I have put my spirit within him. So the anointing enhances our still worship. Therefore, receive today grace for tireless, productive, fruitful still worship in the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
May your crave for next level empowerment come alive. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Who tell you all that? Now lift your bottles first. The content of this bottle is hereby declared the holy anointing oil. Yeah. It shall deliver its mission. Yeah. The burden of the wicked is rolled off your shoulder. Yeah. The burden of sickness, stagnation, frustration is rolled up. Yeah. The burden of crisis in homes is rolled up. Yeah. Destiny crisis is rolled up. Yeah. The yoke is destroyed. Yeah. Everyone's destiny is released. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Put a little of this oil on your fingertip and straight to your forehead and begin to declare the opening of impossible doors to your life, the opening of impossible doors to your destiny, the opening of impossible doors to your spiritual life. Thank you, Jesus. Declare it boldly. The anointing to keep the word of the Lord and to identify with him openly, unashamedly. Come on out. Settled, settled. Settled, 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 settled. As you say, God settles it. As you say, God settles it. As you say, God settles it. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. As our custom is, and as unfolded from scriptures, all that believe. In the mystery of taking a shot of the oil, I'll turn you loose in a moment to take a shot of this oil. And Matthew 3, 11 and 12 will be executed in your favor. Yeah. He will go in and sweep off every child from your life yeah. and burn them with some unquenchable fire. Yeah. It will preserve all the organs of your body. Restore them to perfect function. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. All that believe this, take a shot of that oil and celebrate God. Thank you, Lord. Cover your bottles, lift up your two hands, and give God thanks. Amen. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise, everybody. Amen. We have copies of the third in the series of Open Doors, or the last in the series of Open Doors in our hands. They will pass that to you at the various entrances as you go and ensure you come along with someone to be blessed along with you. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks for his good and his mercy endures forever. Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship, everybody? Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the Covenant Highways of Life. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go and be blessed as you do. All our new converts be reminded. You have to stop at any of the new convert tents outside the major entrances to the tabernacle to drop the We Love You card and pick up the gift item waiting for you. If you came in after the worship offering was received, there are officials around the altar and various exits carrying late offering tags. Do well to drop your offering and be blessed. If you want to share your testimony in the second service, quickly rush to any of the major entrances. Our pastors are waiting right there to document your testimony. Don't forget to pick up the flyers as you head out at the various entrances, be blessed.
choir.
Shout the loudest, hallelujah. <laughs> Give the Lord a mighty clap of friend this Sunday morning. You can make it bigger, it's for Jesus. Louder and louder and louder and louder. Bigger and bigger and bigger for Jesus. Praise God. Please, you may be comfortably seated. On this covenant day of open doors, the anointing shall destroy every yoke upon everyone's life. Amen. Let me hear you loud. Amen. Amen. Our call to worship in this service is taken from the book of Psalm chapter 47 and we are reading together responsibly from verse 1 to the end. Psalms chapter 47. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of trial. Verse 2 together. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. For he shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. God is gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Six. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises unto our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Eight, God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. And then together, loudest, everybody, one, two, go. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the sheets of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. You are welcome to church. Put your hands together for the Lord. Please listen attentively to the Faith Tabernacle announcement for this second service. Number one, praise the Lord. Please be reminded that we are all expected to continue to follow up on all the harvest from the prophetic weeks of harvest, ensuring that they attend both Sunday and midweek services, WSF meetings, the Believers Foundation class, and partake in water baptism. Remember, God who sees your tireless labor in secret will reward you openly. Let's say a better amen to them. Number two, praise the Lord. Believers Foundation Class BFC for all our new converts and new members holds tomorrow Monday. Note that this can either be online on the link displayed bfc.lfcww.org or live at any of our BFC centers across Lagos, Ota, and Environs. Details on the closest location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via SMS, and the time is 6 to 7.30 
p.m. Number three, good news. The online sales of admission forms into Faith Academy Network of Schools for GSS 1 Supplementary Admission and GSS 2 Transfer Admission for 2023-2024 session commences on Monday, 22nd of May through to Sunday, 2nd of July, 2023. Interested parents and guidance are to visit the Education Commission's official website. you find that displayed on the screen, www.eclfcww.org, for the purchase of forms. Note that the scheduled examination date for the two classes, that is GSS-1 and GSS-2, is Saturday, 15th of July, 2023, while the interview date is Saturday, 5th August, 2023. Number four, good news. Water baptism holds this coming Saturday at all our facilities across Lagos and Otter, where we have baptistries. All, both young and old, who are yet to be baptized in water by immersion since they believed are required to partake of this vital kingdom mystery. Remember to come with a change of raiment, and the time is 7.30 a.m. Number five, praise the Lord. There is no doubt that we are all being visited by God in this season. Therefore, send your testimonies to the link displayed, that is testimonies at davidoyedekoministries.com or testimonies at lfcww. Dot org. Number six, Covenant Hour Prayer continues tomorrow Monday to Saturday in Canaan Land and all our designated locations across Lagos and Otter. The time again is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number seven, praise the Lord. Midway Communion Service hosts this coming Wednesday, both here in Canaan Land and at all Zona Fellowship Centers in Lagos, Otter, and Environs. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion, and the time is 6 p.m. Right now in this service, it is testimony time. Please give Jesus a big hand. If you hear your name, kindly proceed to the altar area to share your testimony. Brother Vic, Victory Bernard Chino Yere. Brother Victory Bernard, please, if that sounds like your name, proceed to the altar area to share your testimony. And Brother Lucky Okoti, Brother Lucky Okoti, and Brother Victory Bernard, please quickly proceed to the altar area to share your testimony. Now let's conclude in the announcement. Number eight, Winner Satellite Fellowship. Our House Wars Fellowship holds this Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Otter. Remember that we shall be praying for one another. Invite a neighbor to partake in this fellowship time and don't miss this for anything. The time is 5 to 6 p.m. Finally, number nine, praise the Lord. Next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle shall be the final part of our covenant day of open doors. In the month of May. It shall also double as our end-of-month special Thanksgiving marriage and children dedication service. In this service, God shall not only be showing us how to secure open doors in our journey, but how to keep the doors of favor open to us all through life. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Come along with your converts, invitees, and other loved ones. And we shall be holding four services, the times again, 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m., 9.50 a.m., and 11.45 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Please give the Lord a big hand. Once again, in this service, it is testimony time. Put your hands together for Jesus is worthy. Please step up to come and share your testimony with the brethren, starting with your name and what the Lord has done. 
Praise the Lord. My name is Victory Bernard. I'm a graduate of mass communication. I served in Ohio State. And then um, while during my service here in 2020, I made some contributions to the state where I served in areas of um, COVID-19, charity, and in education. Um, to the glory of God, I kept believing God to move in that regard. Um, God told me that he was going to honor me for my contributions. And um, to the glory of God, I kept on believing God, uh, made some kingdom sacrifices as well as other kingdom commitments. Um, by 2023, um, to the glory of God, I was among the 65 outstanding ex core members that were called by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and we were given a national award or a national honor, and um, it was amazing. And uh, we, the award came with a federal employment, came with a scholarship, and also a cash reward. So to the glory of God, I came here to acknowledge the grace, the wisdom, and the power, and the favor of God in the life of young people. To God be all the glory. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord is worthy. The testimony starting with your name. Hallelujah. My name is Loki Okoti. I've come to give God all the praise for what he has done for me. In March this year, I was given double promotion where I worked. And um, by end of April, some set of people were promoted again, but this time around to a managerial position. And when I checked the list, I saw that um, there are some people that met me in the company who are on that list. Then I said I should be part of this list as well. So I began to pray. When the first Sunday this month was declared covenant day of open door, I said, thank God that that door for that manager position will be open unto me. So I came in for the service. During the course of the third service, um, Pastor David Jr. was ministering and he said, the sound of faith we make determine the sound of, you know, signs and wonder we command. He said, we should continue declaring whatever we want. Right there in my seat, I kept declaring. As we left the service, I kept declaring. By that Sunday evening, my team leader called me and said, she will not be able to go for the uh, Monday uh, team leader meeting that she should step in for her. So I went. Right there in the meeting, I said, I came today in a, in a representative capacity. I want to come back here in my own capacity. So as the meeting was going on, because I was not really part of that, I kept declaring, speaking in tongue on my seat. By Tuesday evening, I went out and I was coming in. A team leader knows me, come. He said, lucky congratulations. I said, for what? He said, have you not checked your mail? I said, no. As I was going home, other people have called me, congratulating me. By the time I got home, I opened my mail. I the mail read, congratulations. Have you successfully passed through our leadership selection process? You are now being made a team lead. But to the glory of God, I did not pass through any selection process. I did not go for any interview. Up on Monday, I went there representing somebody. Last Monday, I went there in my own capacity. I've come to give God the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody in this service is imagining a testimony today. If you are the one, put your hands together for Jesus. If that hand is for Jesus, make it bigger, it's worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Today is my privilege to welcome some special people into the service. If today is your first time worshiping at the Faith Tabernacle on a Sunday like this, may I ask that you please stand on your feet in God's presence and remain standing. Give Jesus a big hand as these precious people rise everywhere. He's worthy of all the praise. Please remain standing. Remain standing. Our officials will put into your hand a welcome package. Along with it, you'll be given a card that you need to fill. And as soon as you receive that package and that card, you may take your seat and begin to fill that card in the course of this welcome. Ensure you get those two items before you are seated. And once you receive them, take your seat and begin to fill the card in the course of this welcome. I want to specially welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church and his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained by God as a house of liberation by divine mandate, where God stops the tears of men and women, old and young, boys and girls, where God terminates all oppressions of the devil 
and confers breakthroughs on all members as they believe. God has not ceased to confirm his word since this mandate was delivered over four decades ago. I want to welcome you today to this breakthrough family. And may today be your entry into the realms of unstoppable breakthroughs that you have always longed for in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe, say louder, amen. amen. Therefore, to all of our first-time worshipers, we say to you this morning, welcome home. Give Jesus a big hand is worthy of praise. May I request one more time for our first-time worshipers to please rise for a word of prayer and blessing. Please rise one more time, this time for a word of prayer and blessing. Bow your head as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for these precious people. You have drawn them by your mighty hand. You brought them because you have chosen to bless them. Therefore, today we declare by authority that these precious people are blessed in the name of Jesus. Whatever they have left behind as a concern in any department of their lives, let those issues be converted to open testimonies. Lord, we ask of you also that whatever the issue may be, because they have come on this covenant day of open doors, let the doors of life be opened on their behalf. Above all, for any one of these precious ones that are yet to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, let today be the, the, the day of their salvation. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. Please, you may be seated. Ensure that your forms are completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Once again, you are welcome and God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand. Good news. It is offering time. I said offering time. Please, if you haven't done so quickly at this moment, begin to package your worship seed and every other thing that you may have proposed in your heart to give your tithe and so on and so forth. Remember, we have various channels of giving that you can utilize this morning. You can utilize our electronic giving channels right now on the screen. You can also give in cash. And if you desire, you can write a check in favor of Faith Tabernacle Canaan Land. What you and I have ready in our hand to give is a seed. But the Bible says in Proverbs 18:21 that life and death are in the power of the tongue. And he that loveth it or speaketh right shall eat the fruit thereof. Your seed in your hand today will become a fruit tomorrow. I like you right now, rise on your feet, lift up your worship seed and every other thing you are presenting before the Lord and now speak life into it. It is in your mouth, it is in your tongue. Begin to declare, my seed shall be prosperous. This seed carries life. It will end up as a fruit. It will not die as a seed. It will end up as a fruit. This is multiplied a thousandfold. Speak life into your seed right now and as you do so, God is hearing you. Father, we thank you and we give you all the praise and all the glory for it. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. The life you have spoken into your seed today makes this seed in your hand prosperous. This seed shall end up as a bountiful harvest. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. All right, take your seat. The Faith Tabernacle Choir will be ministering to the Lord and blessing our souls as we cast our offerings.
Thank you, Jesus. Will you help to announce to your neighbors, right, left, all things are possible in Jesus' name. Be very specific. Your thing is possible in the name of Jesus. Somebody give a shout of hallelujah to the Lord. Rejoice and be glad because God will do a great thing in your life today. The first in the series of Covenant Day of Open Door, God opened the door. Last Sunday, he widened the door. Today, he will make it wider for you. For the doors, the various doors he had opened to us in the past, let's thank him truly from our hearts right now. Thank him genuinely. Give him the glory. If you give him thanks for the previous, you'll be entitled for the next one. No murmuring, no complaining. Thank him. Remember the doors he opened before and truly thank him for it. And thank him for another set of doors he will open to you today. Thank him. Thank him. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Bless his name. Thank you and thank you. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. And blessed be God. In Jesus wonderful name we have given thanks. Amen. Heavenly Father, this morning we stand before you with joy and gladness. For in your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. I decree this morning everyone's pleasure shall be turned into pleasure. Amen. Everyone who came in here oppressed this morning will go back totally free. Everyone came in here confused. We go back with clarity. As it has been declared, this is another day of open door for you. Father, send your word. Because your word is a key to doors. As your word comes forth, let doors be opening. Give each person here instant testimonies. Thank you, mighty Father. And all the saints of God in the house, let your faith show by a loud shout of amen. amen. Please get seated. I can see somebody clapping for the Lord. Another person shouting hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am finally on the covenant highway of life. I'm sure you want to say it louder. Congratulations. Amen and amen. The prophetic focus by way of reminder for this month is I am redeemed a wonder to my world. Will somebody say that with me again? Say it and believe it. That is your new realm in the name of Jesus. Our teaching series every Sunday, this being part 3B, is unlocking the supernatural. And it's my privilege to bring God's word along that line in this service, for which I'm grateful to God and to his servant. Unlocking the supernatural. Help me tell your neighbor, you are supernatural. If your neighbor didn't tell you well, say it to yourself. Super simply means above. You are not natural. Anybody who sees you and thinks so is making a mistake. He needs to shine his eyes. But don't wait for them to see it. Because they cannot see it. That's why you are a wonder to them. See yourself with the eye above the natural. Whatever happens to them is not your portion. Anything is free to happen to them, but not to you. Because you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You carry a gene inside you that cannot be challenged by any natural authority. Something unique about you 
in the faith when you gave your life to Jesus is that your status has been changed. Say with me, I am now supernatural. Over and over again in all of these services, every Sunday we understood that the supernatural is simply a product of obedience of faith. You have to learn obedience to earn supernatural life. You have to learn obedience to continue to live the supernatural life. You learn your way into it. It's already in you, but you have to learn. You have to behave yourself into it. You learn it. How much you learn about the supernatural determines how much of the supernatural you can deliver. We learn our way into it. All of us have it. But not all are manifesting because not all are learning. They know not. They understand not. And therefore, the whole system around them is out of course. Obedience of faith. John 2, 3, 11. Jesus told them what to do. And whatever he tells you to do, do it. Water was turned into wine. John 9, 1 to 8. He met a blind man, plastered his eyes, told him to the pool to go and wash. And he obeyed. He returned the same. John 14, 21. As we continue to obey his word, he manifests himself in our lives. When we obey his word, he said, my father and I will come to him and manifest ourselves. So manifestations of the spirit is a product of obedience of faith. But again, the knowledge of who we are is what determines what we can do. You need to know who you are. Self-discovery is the master key to self-recovery. Discovery is pathway to recovery. Discovery. On this note, let's quickly examine this morning, who am I? Somebody please ask yourself, who am I? The scripture is the description of who you are. Why? It is the manufacturer's handbook. This little piece of microphone I'm holding, I don't have the authority to tell how it functions because I'm not the manufacturer. The manufacturer gives details of his product. You and I are God's product. And this book is, is manufacturer's product that he delivered to us. So you cannot know you aside of this book. Continuous discovery is what makes you maximize destiny the way God wants you to be. Number one, who am I? I am a redeemed and heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 17. Hear the word of the Lord. And if you are now children, like many of us, oh, I'm a child of God. We are children of God. But it goes beyond that. And if children, then heirs. And I mean heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ. That is to say, the way Jesus is an heir of God is how he has made you to be. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Quickly, what is the meaning of an heir? An heir is one who is entitled to an inheritance in the family. Now, from our culture, practice in many African countries, we live in a communal system where everybody claims to be a child. Uh, it took me a long time to know how the application of cousin because all of us in the family are brothers. But every father knows his own biological children. 
Not every child in such large family is entitled to inheritance. But the ones that came from his biological body. Because we are born of God, we are born into an inheritance. We are actually born again to inherit. To inherit. By redemption, we are called to inherit a blessing. First Peter chapter 3, verse 8, the later part of it. We are born to inherit a blessing. Verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil, nor railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. What are you called to inherit? What are you called to inherit? Remember, Jesus came as a blessing. Acts chapter 3, verse 26. He sent his son, Jesus, to bless you. So when you gave your life to Jesus, you automatically become an heir. One who has a right. A right. You have a right. Once you are born again in the school of the supernatural, you don't beg for blessing. You have a right to blessing. Somebody say with me, it is my right to be blessed. Say it again, it is my right to be blessed. And that's why Jesus said before he left, as the Father has sent me to be an heir to him, I send you to be an heir of God as well. Jesus meant to say, I don't have more right to this blessing than you do. As the Father sent me, so send I you. You must therefore begin to carry a sense of liberty as a child of God. The way God blesses me, he wants to bless you. The way God blesses his servant, he wants to bless you as well. Say with me again, it is my right to be blessed. <laughs> Say loud, amen. amen. If a man has five children, all the five have a right to the dining table. All the five has a right to the dining table. If bread is there, each of them can take their portion. They don't deal with discrimination when it comes to joint hair in the kingdom. Number two, who am I? In redemption, the supernatural becomes your natural lifestyle. The supernatural becomes your lifestyle. Which is to say, living supernaturally is not a desire or an ambition. It is what you are made to be. It is what you are already made to be. You are meant to live naturally or rather supernaturally, naturally. The supernatural is your natural estate. It's your natural habitat. You should not be surprised that supernatural things are happening to you. You should rather be surprised when they don't happen. I've had God's servant said over and over again, I'm not surprised where we are. I would have been rather surprised if we are not here. The supernatural is your natural habitat. Somebody say loud, amen. Yeah. It's your natural habitat to live in health. It's your natural habitat to live prosperous. It's your natural habitat to live a successful person. Never say again, I am surprised it happened. It shouldn't be a surprise to you. Say it again, I am supernatural. You say, I am the children God has given to me. We are for signs and wonders. Living below the supernatural standard is unacceptable in this kingdom. It's a displeasure to God for you to live natural when you can live supernatural. It's an embarrassment to the kingdom of God. When you who should be a giver end as a beggar. When you who should be a healer end up in sickness. It's an embarrassment to the kingdom of God. So when next sickness comes your way, you should rather say to yourself, this is an embarrassment. No, I don't want this. 
No, I reject it. And suddenly you see it disappear. If I were you, I would say bye-bye to sickness. Bye-bye to failure. Bye-bye to begging. You'll never see any of those things again. Number three. I am redeemed to have dominion over death. This may sound strange to anybody. You hear people say in the public places, you don't know whose turn it is next. Say with me, it is not my turn. To die. For I shall not die. I shall live. To declare the works of the Lord. Be careful of the philosophy of men. You hear people tell all kinds of stories. Oh, and I saw him last night. And suddenly this morning, he died. Nobody can tell what may happen to him over the night. I can tell what will happen. Because he that keepeth Israel never sleep nor slumber. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shadow on your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. I know what will happen. How do I know? Because God tells me so. You say you don't know what will happen because people are telling you so. I choose to believe the one who told me that I am secure. That the number of my days I will fulfill. That's what he says. You see, you have to make a choice. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19, he said, I lay before you life and death. I lay before you life. If you look at it, the first thing God presented was life. It is when you reject life that you experience death. Once you choose life, death withdraws. Because you are not permitted to choose more than one. I lay before you blessing and cursing. Which one do you choose? So curse does not have power over you. Therefore, I leave for you to choose what? You see, God made presentation of option and he made recommendation for you what to choose. I recommend to you to choose life that both you and thy seed may live. So when you choose life, you are entitled to live. You make your choice. You know what that means? Death does not have power over you. Oh, I thought somebody saying amen to that. How do I know it doesn't have power? It will have been the first thing. The scripture will have said, I lay before you death and life. But I lay before you life. Say, I choose life. life. Shout to somebody. You know what you are doing now? You are telling the devil, hey, you don't have power over me. You are telling that don't come close to my family. You will not hear news of untimely death in your family this year. It's a choice you have to make. The deed is already done. The provision is already made. Psalm 91 verse 16. The number of your days. I mean, uh, uh, Exodus 23, 25. The number of your days will I fulfill. Psalm 91 verse 16. With long life will I satisfy. But you have a choice either to be satisfied or not to be satisfied. God does not impose anything on anyone. You live a supernatural life. Scripture reveals to us that death has been abolished. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26. Let's quickly run through that. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And let's see how Jesus did it by the revelation of Paul the Apostle. 1 Corinthians, the same chapter, 15, 55 to 57. 55 to 57. Oh, death, where is your sting? You can see a man like Paul challenging death. Death is challengeable. Oh, death, where is that sting? Oh, grave, where is that victory? The sting of death is sin, and we are no longer under the clause, clause of sin, and the strength of sin is the law, which no longer has influence on, upon our life. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory over death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody shout, I have victory over death. You see, as I'm speaking right now, somebody's mind is saying, hey, be careful how you say it all. <laughs> don't be careful. When it is the word, don't be careful. When it is the word you are declaring, don't be careful. Because Satan is scared by your declaration. 
your declaration is an indication of your willingness, your readiness to be exempted. Satan is a coward though. He's a coward. Once you start speaking, he starts clearing. Paul challenged him. He challenged death and death couldn't kill him. To a point that he was toying with death. I don't even know whether I should go or not. Uh, but I think I will stay because of you. He determined when to leave. They threw him inside the sea. He survived. He became amphibious. He was living like fish inside water. Because he made a choice. Say with me, I choose to live. One more time, I choose to live. That's how Jesus lived. It's not only when we get there that we shall live, but here. Because upon this mountain, according to Isaiah chapter 25, verse 6 to 8, death shall be abolished. Death shall be put to shame. In our time, we will make a mess of death. I say we will make a mess of death. Because death shall be swallowed up in victory. It is your choice. Say it again, I choose to live. Many years ago, I sat with a young man on this bed, hospital bed, and I asked him a question. I said, are you sure you are not afraid to die? He said, sir, I must tell you the truth. I'm afraid. I couldn't help him. I couldn't help him. David chose to live. I shall not die, but live. That's where the power of your tongue comes in. If the last thing you can say at any time in case you are on a sick bed is to say, I shall not die, God will endorse it. No matter how near death you are, no matter how near death you are, if you can just say, I shall not die, because in your words is the life of God. Death does not have as much power as we attribute to him. How does death come to people? It comes through fear. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 to 15. It comes through fear. The instrument of death is fear. The passage of the devil is fear. He goes to wherever there is fear, just as God goes to wherever there is faith. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through his death, he may reach out to death to destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. And deliver them like you and I who through fear of death while all their lifetime subject to bondage. That was what happened to Job. The thing which I greatly fear has come upon me. Satan has no power to reach you except through the passage of fear. Fear invites Satan just like faith invites God. And your faith to invite God is rooted in your declaration, your choice that you make. Say loud amen. amen. Another loud amen. amen. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. Hear Jesus himself declaring, telling us about it. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Say loud amen. He has a key and you belong to him and he has delivered us the key. The key there is knowledge. He has the key. He has the key and he gave you and hide the key. He has the power and he gave you and hide the power. The power of choice. The power to live. Say it again. I shall not die. I shall live to declare the works of the Lord. God someone told us in the first service 40 years ago he had that teaching. Victory over death. And you know something? The following week, about two, three days after, death came knocking at his door to test what he thought and what he believed. To test what he believed and what he thought. And shamefully, the devil met him fully prepared. Met him fully prepared. In the face of the opposition, he asked himself, what am I doing here? He stood up that day and made the next trip in his mission work. Death does not have power over you. Amen. Oh, not everybody is saying amen. <laughs> amen means I believe. If you believe, say a lot of amen. amen. Every 
Every scheme of the devil to tamper with you or any member of your family is crushed right now. You know, several times he attempted to kill Jesus. They couldn't kill him. Luke chapter 4, verses 28 to 30. They took him up to the brow of the mountain to push him down. He disappeared. He disappeared. They couldn't find him. John 10, 39. They picked up stone to stone him. He walked through their midst. They didn't know when they passed. From this day, every scheme of death, you'll be escaping them. They came to arrest him. In John 18, 4 to 9. And as soon as Jesus asked them, who are you looking for? They fell backward. They couldn't touch him. Jesus was not actually arrested. He delivered himself to them. Jesus was not killed on the cross. Even when they pierced him with sword in John 19, 30. Until he said, I give up the ghost. It is finished. And he gave up the ghost. So until you give up yourself. Death does not have power over you. It does not have power over you. It does not have power over you. Do you know something? No one in this family will ever be cheated by death anymore. Accident will no longer be your portion. Sudden death at night will not visit your home. Now, quickly. How do you unlock the supernatural? We're looking at how to do that by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the grand commander of the supernatural. The grand commander. That is, without the Holy Ghost, you can't talk about the supernatural. Joel chapter 2, verse 28, all the way to 30. By prophecy of things to come. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall see dreams. Your young men shall see visions. All of that is happening right now. But beyond that, verse 29, beyond the visions, the revelation, and also upon thy servant, and upon the hindmaids in those days, will I pour my spirit, and verse 30, and I will shew wonders in the heaven, and in the hearts, blood, and fire, and pillars of smoke. Strange things will be happening. He is a grand master. And on the day of Pentecost, he came down. And while Paul, I mean Peter, stood up to speak. He spoke between verses 17 and 20. Repeating the words of Joel. The things that God was going to do. On that day of Pentecost, he came down like a rushing mighty wind. He came in a way that nobody could deny that he came. You can't deny the supernatural. When it's happening, you know it. You can't explain it, but you cannot deny it. It came that day. And in chapter 3, we saw how that by that power, the cripple was, was healed at the beautiful gate. And in chapter 5, diverse more manifestations through the apostles, particularly through Peter, whose shadow was healing the sick, delivering the oppressed. And that's what you have. Once you are born again, you know you are conceived of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit begins to command signs and wonders in your life. You are born of the Spirit. John chapter 3 from verses 5 to 8. About three, four times, you see repeatedly, born of the Spirit, born of the Spirit, born of the Spirit. So everyone born of the Spirit is meant to be a commander of signs and wonders. The Holy Ghost is the grand commander and you are the commander. Say with me, I am a commander of signs and wonders. Say it again, I'm a commander of the supernatural. But we must understand that the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is in different levels. We must continue to desire and increase in our level of anointing. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8, he said, You shall receive power. And in chapter 4, verses 30 to 34, he talked about great power. So you can grow from power to great power. You can grow from power to great power. Help me tell your neighbor, you must be ready to grow. And from there, we saw how in the life of Jesus, he returned in the power of the Spirit. Luke 4.14, 4, he returned in the power of the Spirit. 
Even Jesus was growing in power. And in Luke chapter 9, verse 35, we saw how another level of power was being described as great power. Great power. Great power. Or mighty power. Mighty power. This can happen when we begin to thirst and hunger for God. Psalm 63, verses 1 to 3. O Lord my God, holy will I seek thee. My soul longer for thee. My flesh cried out for the living God. I'm desiring to see the power of and the glory of God so as I've seen thee in the temple. Very illustratively, we saw or we see in Ezekiel chapter 47 from verses 1 all the way how that different measure of power of anointing was made available. So the more we desire and crave, the more measure we can see made manifest in our lives. Our measure of anointing is what determines our strength of command of the supernatural. Let me repeat that again. Our measure of anointing is what determines our strength of command. You don't pray to take command. You grow to take command. You grow to take command. If you study the gospel very well, you see that when Jesus began, you'll be casting out devils. A time came he wasn't casting them out. They were casting out themselves. When they see him coming, they cry with a loud voice, a few come to destroy us. There was a time he was casting them out. There was another time he was destroying them. He grew in command of that power. Somebody say loud amen. amen. Our measure of anointing is what determines our strength of command of the supernatural. This is why we must continue to grow. What more must we do to unlock the power of the Holy Ghost? We must know that we have the authority to command the supernatural. There must be a knowing in you that you too can command it. How? Mark 16, 17 and 20. Jesus said to all believers, these signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer? Let me hear you. Are you a believer? What will happen? Signs will follow you. Signs will do what? Follow you. When you wake up tomorrow morning and you are going out, just look back and say, signs and wonders, follow me. Follow me. They are meant to be following you. You are their command. That they are meant to follow you, not shame and reproach. You follow you. So anytime you are faced with shame or reproach, query the shame and reproach. You are not meant to follow me. Signs and wonders are meant to follow me. Engage in Holy Ghost reaction. But please listen to this. The authority to draw signs and wonders is principally or majorly on the account of your serving God's interest. The more you serve him, the more of the authority you assess. His power and authority expressly goes with those who are serving his interest. Luke 9, verse 1 and verse 6. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. On what account? Verse 6, they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. They departed. They went everywhere. When you are on the go for him, power will be released to go with you. When you are on the go for him, power will be released to go with you. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about, not who sat around. Acts 10, 38. He went about. Power is given for us to go about serving him. 
he went about doing good, healing all them that were oppressed of the devil because God was with, with him. Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 to 25. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogue, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Can you see? Jesus went about to manifest the power of God. Chapter 9, the same thing out there. Verse 35, he went about. So for as long as you go in the interest of his kingdom, which includes soul winning, which includes soul establishment and bringing people into the house of God. You don't lack the power. You know why we have not lacked power in this church? We are a soul winning church. Over decades, this church has been on the go. You can't kill a church that is on the go. You know why we call many churches dead churches today? They are no more on the go. And stagnant water stinks. I have never seen a church on the go that stops to grow. Not just growing in number, but growing in power. You hear testimonies of diverse signs and wonders taking place in this, you know, happening in this place. It is not accidental. It's because the church is on the mission for God. So God's power is backing them up. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Paul said, for it is a power of God on salvation. Gospel bearers are power carriers. Gospel bearers are power carriers. You can't miss the power once you're on the go. Tell your neighbor, be on the go for Jesus. Did you hear what he said in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18? Go ye into all the world. Matthew 28 verse 18. Go ye into all the world. That's the command. All power in heaven is given unto me in heaven and on the earth. Therefore, verse 19, go into all the world. So the power is meant for going, for going, winning more souls. Until we see them fully established. Be on the go for Jesus and be on the go with his power. Say loud amen. amen. Another loud amen. amen. If you look at all of this, it's pointing to one thing. That authority is conferred on sons, not on children. So we must commit ourselves to spiritual growth. And growth comes through feeding and exercise. You feed on the word. You exercise yourself in spiritual things, in soul winning, in praying kingdom advancement prayer, in giving to those who have need so that they can be established in the house of God. Exercise. Growth comes by feeding and by exercise. Growth comes by knowledge and by engaging in the things you have learned. We must commit ourselves to growth. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be only upon the soldier of the son. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. An heir, for as long as he's a child, he remains as a servant. Cheated, buffeted, kicked here and there, until he has grown, he cannot manifest. Until he has grown, he cannot manifest. Tell your neighbor, you must grow. If you don't want to groan, if you don't want to groan, you must grow. Answer your neighbor back, I will, I will grow. Give Jesus a big hand. <laughs> On this covenant day of open door part three, new doors are opening to you. Yeah. I thought I had somebody say loud amen. Please understand that you are redeemed to enjoy open door as a way of life. Somebody say with me, way of life. It's not that the door opens and tomorrow it has closed and you are looking for another one. As a way of life. As a matter of fact, scripture tells us that if one closes against you, it is preparation for seven others. Therefore, your doors will continually be open before you. In Isaiah chapter 60, I think verse 15, he said, thy gate shall be continually opened before you. Continually, continually opened before you. Your gate shall not be shut. 
I declare by the unction that backs up this commission that no door shall be closed against you anymore. Yeah. Isaiah 60, 11. Therefore, thy gate shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night that men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. That will be your experience from now. Yeah. But open doors have its covenant anchor on two major things. If you look at it from Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 and verse 8, it anchors basically on two things. To the angel of the church of Philadelphia, right? This thing said, he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he opened it, no man can shut, and he shut it, no man can open. Look at the following verse, verse 8. Therefore, I know your works. As a result of your works, I've set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength that I know you cannot open the door by yourself. But this is what will make me open the door for you. Number one, you have kept my word. Keeping his word, obeying his commandment is key to opening the door. Remember? John 14, 21. If you keep his word, himself and the Father will come and manifest. That is, they will open the door to you. So obedience to his word is key to opening the door. Number two, he said, because you have not denied my name, you identified with me. You are not hiding your identity from the people of the world. You make them know that you are a child of God. That's the second part of it. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 8. Thou hast not denied my name. When you were challenged and people tempted you to go and use charms, you said, no, I will not. I remember as a young boy in the neighborhood where I grew up, one elderly man came to me, or rather he invited me to meet him in his house. And I got there. He looked at me in the eye. He said, I love you. There's a future before you. I don't want people to hurt you. And he brought out one black thing in his hand to give to me. And he looked with me, at me with the expectation that I was collecting from him. I looked at him in the eye and told him I have something bigger than this. <laughs> he never knew what to do, whether to drop it. His hand was what? To save him embarrassment, I quickly turned back and left him to decide what he wanted to do. I have something. Until you are able to deny other alternatives, God cannot arise for you. Beware of the legs of men. Anytime an opportunity comes, oh, my uncle is there. Oh, my brother is there. Is the MD there? Oh, is he? No mention of God. That's why God left you to eat to go and open it by yourself. Have you not heard God's servant say over and over again, whatever God cannot do, let it remain undone. Has he not been doing it? Has he not been doing it here? He will do it for you. Don't deny the name of your God. Don't bow to idols secretly. Don't come to church with empty hand without a Bible because you don't want people to know you are going to church. There are people who carry Bible. Genesis chapter 1 is not there. Revelation chapter 22 is not there. So that means you don't have the beginning. You don't have an end. Some people hide their Bible inside newspaper. Say so me, I will not deny my Jesus. Matthew 10, 23. Whosoever deny me before men, I will deny him. Say loud, amen. amen. Now, receive the anointing for open doors. The anointing is the door opening power. The anointing of the Holy Spirit opens impossible doors, as we saw in the case in Isaiah chapter 45, verses 1 to 3, in the case of Cyrus. Thus said the Lord to his anointed. And he's saying the same thing to you this morning, he's anointed. So me, I'm God's anointed. I didn't hear you very well. So what is he saying to you? I will lose the loins of kings. I will subdue nations before you. And I will open before you the two leaf gates. When the anointing opens the door, no man can shut it. Watch it. As you receive the anointing this morning, no devil, no force in hell 
shall be able to shut the door against you anymore. Now, when Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit, fresh anointing, new doors were opening to him. His fame spread abroad. Luke 4, 14 and verse 37. Repeatedly, his fame spread abroad. Look at the apostles. They were in hiding after Jesus left. But when power came in chapter 2 of Acts of the Apostles, Peter stood up to speak. Boldness came upon him. New doors were opened to them. All the way. Chapter 4, chapter 8. I mean chapter 5. The doors kept opening to them. More people were getting saved. As you receive this anointing today, you will be stepping into endless open doors. Endless open door. Remember, it's not enough to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You have to grow. As you grow in power, you are growing in command. As you grow in power, you are growing in command. What more should you do? You must keep yourself clean. Because new wine, we require new wine skin. Newness of life is a covenant requirement for new anointing. You can't change your level without changing your lifestyle. I had God's servant say that in the first service. You cannot change your level without changing your lifestyle. You can't change your level without change of your lifestyle. Remember the story of Samson. Samson was anointed, but his lifestyle betrayed the oil on his head. He lost his two eyes because he wouldn't keep control on his eyes. So anointed. That he could kill 1,000 people at a, at, 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 a go, at a go with a jaw of an ass that is fresh. He didn't know the spirit had left him. He toyed with sin and Satan toyed him, turned him into a toy. He toyed with sin and Satan turned him into a toy. Sin is dangerous. Young people here, beware. If sinners entice you, do not consent. Don't go the way of the world. Stay in the way of the kingdom. Don't tell me, you know, these young people, they are faced with many temptations. We were also young before. Don't confuse anybody. We were young before. We didn't bow to sin. That you bow to sin today is your choice. Don't say there are many temptations. There were temptations in those days when we were growing up like you. Don't toy with sin. If you don't want to become a toy in the hand of the devil. No one here will end as a toy in the hand of the devil. At my reproof, and I'll pour out my spirit upon you, says the scripture, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23, Luke 5, 37 to 38. New wine skin will be required for new wine. Somebody is getting ready for new wine right now. Yeah. Don't forget also that new wine, new anointing demands a task and a longing. We have said that before, Isaiah chapter 44, verses 3 to 5, and Isaiah chapter 41, verse 47. Today, by this anointing, I see new doors opening to you. Yeah. I see new doors opening to you. Raise your voice and begin to declare that right now. I see new doors opening to me. I see new doors opening to me. And I give glory to God for it. And I give glory to God for it. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. Another loud amen. amen. Without repentance, there cannot be an outpouring. Without repentance. Someone is seated here this morning in this wonderful service or you are watching this service live, wherever you are. You know you are not born again. You have not given your life to Jesus. There is a witness inside you that you are not right with God. I don't mean to condemn you, but you know what I'm talking about. There is a witness right now because nobody knows you like you and God. Something is telling you, repent. Turn away from your sin. Turn everything over to God. Wherever you are seated, you want to give your life to Jesus this morning. So it can become your Lord and Savior. Please rise to your feet. Quickly do that. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Also, there are individuals. You gave your life to Jesus before. But somehow, you are tempted. You step back or you stepped aside. You have not been following Jesus again the way you used to follow. You want to recover yourself today. You want to rededicate your life back to God. You want to return back home like the prodigal son. I know there are people like that this morning. Please rise to your feet as well. It's never late to turn. You can turn back to God. God is a God of another chance. You are falling, but he will not condemn you. He's calling you to rise again. He's calling you to rise again. He's calling you to rise again. Somebody who is doing that, please rise to your feet. As many as have risen, and those who will join them, please lift up your right hand as we pray together. Lift up your right hand. 
and say this simple prayer with me. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Say it louder, please. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. I come to you today as a sinner. I need your help. I need your forgiveness. I need your mercy. Now I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus died for me. On the third day, he rose again for my justification. Because I believe I am now born again. I am now a child of God. My sins are washed away. My name is written in the book of life. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Heavenly Father, we receive these souls into your kingdom and we banish the power of sin and of the devil from their lives in Jesus' precious name. Now, receive the power to go and sin no more in Jesus' wonderful name. Please quickly complete the, the little form that is given to you right now. You complete it and uh, when you are done, you raise it up and give it to any of the church officials next to you. Make sure you write your telephone number very clearly and uh, you are also informed that we'll be having a special Believers Foundation class. It's either online or with your physical presence. Uh, if you complete your phone well with your telephone, message will be sent to you on where you can attend the foundation class live. If you are attending online, look at the address on the screen, take note of the details, and immediately you will be logged in to take care of you. Secondly, there is a card that is given to you as soon as this service closes, you go to any of the tent close to the main uh, entrances. You submit it and the church has a special package to give you in return. You are blessed in Jesus' name. How many of us can see new open doors right now? Rise to your feet and begin to declare with your mouth. Begin to declare with your mouth. The doors are newly opened to me. In addition to the one that has been opened before, begin to challenge the spirit of death around your life. Challenge everything that is making a mess of your redemption right. You are an heir of God. You are a joint heir of Christ. Anything that does not happen to Christ is not permitted to happen to you. Make your bold declaration. I make a choice to live the supernatural life. The supernatural is my heritage. The supernatural is my heritage. Somebody pray right now. It's your turn. It's your right. It's your turn. It's your right. It's your turn. It's your right. Somebody claim it right now. Somebody declare it. It's your turn. It's your right. It's your turn. It's your right. Somebody declared. New doors are opening. The doors that have been opened will no longer be shut. Begin to make a new commitment of your love for God. I will keep serving him. Every day in soul winning, in soul establishment, I will keep serving him. I will keep serving him. I will keep serving him. Be bold to make your declaration right now. I will soon I will cease be serving him. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Shall we receive God's servant to take us through the anointing session? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything about life's dignity is rooted in taking responsibility. No one can grow for you. You have to take responsibility for growth. No one can build your faith for you. You and I have to take responsibility to grow our faith. No one can make discoveries for you. You have to be committed to making discoveries. Everything about life that adds value to any individual is a result of taking responsibility to make it happen. I therefore pray that both by the word you have heard and by the anointing at this time, something will be turned loose in your life. <laughs> I can't keep the word of God for you, and you can't keep it for me. You have a little strength, but you have kept my word. I can't identify Jesus with Jesus publicly for you. You have to do it. I have to do it. There's no way I can pray for anyone here to become a pilot if you won't take responsibility to go through the training. He may wear the uniform or he's not a pilot. 
we have no choice to keep the doors of favor open we must keep his word we must not be ashamed of him and when God is proud of you forget about the devil when God backs you up forget about an enemy Lord, by this anointing, engrace me to take more spiritual responsibility as you reveal your word to me. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Everybody pray. I can't repent for you. You want new anointing? You need new lifestyle. You need fresh oil? Walk in the newness of life. Jesus! By the anointing of today and grace me to take more spiritual responsibility. To secure my glorious destiny and enjoy unending open doors all through my life. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. The mystery of the anointing oil is a transgenerational mystery. The word says, Exodus 30, verse 31, and this shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. So its impact is the same all through generations. Its mission is the same all through generations. Therefore, today, by this anointing, every burden of the wicked weighing down on your life, hanging on your shoulders, shall be rolled away. <laughs> For it is written, it shall come to pass in that day. Today is that day. <laughs> when the burden of the wicked shall be taken from off your shoulder <laughs> and it's yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Yeah. So everything choking anyone's life shall be destroyed today. Yeah. Anything making life unbearable for anyone shall be destroyed today. Yeah. Every yoke of the wicked blocking the doors against your forward movement shall be destroyed today. By this anointing, the Lord will go before you. Yeah. It will make the crooked path straight. Yeah. It will cut in sunder the bars of iron. Yeah. And break in pieces the gates of brass. Yeah. By this anointing, the Lord will open the door to the hidden treasures of darkness. The hidden riches of secret places. Yeah. To show that is the one that anointed thee. Yeah. And so shall it be. Yeah. Everything choking your family life shall be destroyed. Yeah. Everything choking your business shall be destroyed. Yeah. Everything choking your spiritual life shall be destroyed. Everything choking the life of any of your children shall be destroyed. 
By this anointing, the threat of death over your life is destroyed. No one dies young in your household. No one among us here dies young. No one buries any of their children. You never bury your children. You never bury your grandchildren. With long life, the Lord will satisfy you. Our members of your household and show you his salvation. You shall not die but live. And declare the works of the Lord. Take your bottles off. The content of every bottle lifter today is hereby declared the holy anointing oil. As this oil comes on your head, a new day dawns on your life. A new level of authority answers to you. You say to this go, it must go. You say to that come, it must come. A new chapter opens to your destiny. Your marital destiny opens up today. Your career destiny opens up today. Your business opens to a new level today. Your spiritual life changes level today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. By this anointing, your taste for the world is declared enhanced. Amen. Obeying the world will become your new way of life. Amen. Doing what God said will no longer be stressful to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Please take a little of this oil on your fingertip and place that on your forehead and begin to appropriate the word of the Lord concerning you. New day, new dawn, new beginning. New day, new dawn, new beginning. With my little strength, I shall come to keep the word. By this anointing, I shall not deny the name of the Lord all the days of my life. Sin shall no more have dominion over me. My spiritual life changes level today. By this anointing, I take command of the supernatural. I take command of the supernatural as my natural way of life. Signs and wonders will never cease. Take command of that challenge. Take command of it. Take command of it. Take command of that issue of concern in your life. Take command of it right now. You can't afford to remain jobless. You are what it takes to take it. Take it. No child of a king begs for, for bread. Take it. You can't afford to keep crying in your marriage. Take command of it. Your business must not keep going down. No, take command of it. Your health must not keep failing. Take command of it. Take command of your health. Lay hold on your heritage of sound health.
In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. May every declaration made, every decrease made, every prayer prayed, be delivered for a testimony. Now, for all that believe in the mystery of taking a shot of the oil, in the name of the Lord Jesus, according to Matthew 3, verse 11 and 12, the Holy Ghost will go into you right now and sweep your inside clean. Yeah. Sweep your inside and my inside clean. Yeah. Preserve the organs of our bodies. Yeah. And burn off the child with his unquenchable fire. Yeah. Your health and wholeness is declared fully restored. This shall be a week of triumph over sickness and disease. Yeah. And that shall be for life. Yeah. Every killer disease shall be burnt off now. Yeah. Every appointment with death shall return back to sender. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. All that believe in this ministry, take a shot of the oil and celebrate Jesus. Cover your bottles. Lift up your two hands to heaven and begin to give glory to God for a new dawn. A new dawn. A new day. A new dawn. A day you will look much remember. Celebrate God, magnify him. There's no one like our God. Give him glory, give him praise. Give him honor, give him adoration. It's your turn to celebrate at last. It's your turn to celebrate at last. It's your turn to celebrate at last. Glorify him. Magnify him. Celebrate him. No one like our God. He reigns forever and forever. Amen. Next Sunday is the third or the last in the series of our Covenant Day of Open Doors. <laughs> Amen. It's been showing us how to secure open doors, but next Sunday we'll be looking at how to sustain open doors for life. We are doors of favor will never be shut against you again. Come prepared for it. As a church, we have never suffered a closed door. You never suffer a closed door anymore. Yeah. There are many, many people in this commission today who are enjoying unstoppable open doors. According to Revelation 3, 7, and 8, you'll be joined to that list. Yeah. It's all about taking responsibility. And grace to take responsibility to keep the doors ever open will be released upon your life. Yeah. We have the flyers here. Covenant Day of Open Doors, 28 May 2023. Stretch forth your hands and ask God to turn this to a spiritual magnet to draft multitudes into church and meet them at the points of their need, heal the sick, set free the captives, open impossible doors to God's people as they come. Save the lost and preserve them in the faith. Now stretch forth your hand and pray in the spirit for a moment. Everyone that holds a copy of this flyer will be drafted here by the Holy Ghost to the glory and praise of our God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have these copies at the entrances. I believe ushers will make copies available to you and joyfully delightsomely, enjoyably, put it in the hands of other people with a smile. Come over. Jesus is opening doors down here. And not only opening doors, he's showing us how to keep the doors ever open. God bless you. Lift up your two hands and give him thanks.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We had the ninth convocation of Landmark University yesterday. Amen. It was an awesome time we were able to graduate people in the first degree category, master's degrees, and PhDs to the glory of God. Good news. After covenant in Nigeria today is landmark. In all spheres of measurement to the glory of God. Everything works here. Therefore, in your life, nothing good will stop working. <laughs> nothing good will stop working. <laughs> nothing good will stop working. <laughs> we have over 10 of them that are faculty members today with their PhDs. Amen. <laughs> Everything works here. Oh. There is no human hand in it. God's hand only. May God's hand that keeps things working here follow you home today. <laughs> Joy may give him thanks. Father, thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Let's share the goodness together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go and be blessed as you do. If you came after the worship offering, there are officials around the altar. We lift it and the various entrances. We lift offering tags. Do well to drop your offering as you go and be blessed as you do. All our new converts, don't forget to take the We Love You card you have been given to any one of the new convert tents outside the major entrances to the tabernacle. Drop the card and pick up the gift item that is waiting for you. If you want to share your testimony in the third service, please rush very quickly to any one of the major entrances to the tabernacle. Our pastors are right there to document your testimony. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Choir.
Jesus a big, 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 big hand this morning uh, with a shout of hallelujah. One more time in honor of Jesus, let's give him a big hand uh, as we take our seat. Our call to worship in this third service this morning, we shall be reading Psalm 63 from verse 1 through to 10, and we shall be reading as our custom is, responsively. Psalms 63. O oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee, my flesh longed for thee in a dry and testy land where no water is. Verse 2. To see thy power and thy glory as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Verse 4, loud and clear. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Verse 6, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. Verse 8, loud and clear. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it, shall go into the lower parts of the earth. Verse 10 together loud and clear. Let's go. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. Will you say amen to that? Amen. You are welcome. Give Jesus a big, big, big hand. Please, let's listen to the Faith Tabernacle announcement for this service. Number one, praise the Lord. Please be reminded that we are all expected to continue to follow up on all our harvests from the prophetic weeks of harvest, ensuring that they attend both Sunday and midweek services, WSF meetings, and Believers Foundation class, and partake also in the water baptism. Remember, God who sees your tireless labor in secret will reward you openly. Say loud, amen. Number two, good news. <laughs> to the glory of God, Landmark University had her ninth convocation last Friday, May 19, 2023. This is a total of 617 undergraduates, second degrees 58, and nine PhD holders. Hallelujah. Number three, praise the Lord. Believers Foundation Class BFC for all our new converts and new members holds tomorrow Monday. Know that this can either be online as shown on the screen or live at any of our BFC centers across Lagos or town environs. Details on the closest location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via SMS. And the time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number four, good news. The online sales of admission forms into Faith Academy Network for JSS 1 and supplementary admission and JSS 2 transfer admission for 2023-2024 session 
commences on Monday, May 22nd to Sunday, 2nd of July, 2023. Interested parents and guardians are to visit the EC official website as shown on the screen for the purchase of forms. Note that the scheduled examination date for the two classes, that is GSS 1 and GSS 2, is Saturday, the 15th of July, 2023, while the interview date is Saturday, the 5th of August, 2023. Number five, good news. Water baptism holds this coming Saturday at all our facilities across Lagos and Ota, where we have baptistries. All, both young and old, who are here to be baptized in water by immersion since they believed, are required to partake of this vital kingdom mystery. Remember to come with a change of raiment. And the time is 7.30 a.m. Number six, praise the Lord. There is no doubt that we are all being visited by God in this season. Therefore, send your testimonies to testimonies at davidoyinikwoministries.com or testimonies at lfcww.org. Number seven, Covenant Our Prayers continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday in Kenaland and in all our designated locations across Lagos and Ota. And the time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number eight, praise the Lord. Midway Communion Service hold this coming Wednesday, both here in Kenaland and at all Zona Fellowship Centers in Lagos, Ota and Environ. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in the fast and break with the communion. And the time is 6 p.m. Number nine, Winner Satellite Fellowship. Our House to House Fellowship holds this Saturday at the WSF Centers across Lagos and Ota. Remember that we shall be praying for one another. Invite a neighbor to partake in this fellowship time. Don't miss this for anything. And the time is 5 to 6 p.m. In this service, it is testimony time. Please let Mrs. Rose Awoyemi come forward and share her testimony. Mrs. Rose Awoyemi. Let's go over now to the announcement as we conclude. Number 10, praise the Lord. Next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle shall be the final part of our covenant day of open doors. In this month of May, it shall also double as our end of month special Thanksgiving, marriage and children dedication service. In this service, God shall not only be showing us how to secure open door in our journey, but how to keep the doors of favor open to us all through life. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Come along with your converts, invitees, and other loved ones. We shall be holding four services. And the times, 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m., 9.50 a.m., and 11.45 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Put your blessings together for Jesus. One more time in this thought service. It is testimony time. Please come forward and share your testimony with God's people. Church, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm finally in my covenant. Highway of life. My name is Mrs. Rose. I'm here to share a testimony for what God did to my son. My son was written with oxygen support for three months. But after the anointing oil and the mantle and connecting on the covenant tower of prayer, God reversed everything. On August, on August, my son was very sick, so he took to the hospital. They say he's broken pneumonia, and they transfused him and put him on oxygen. But after some months, they say the broken pneumonia has gone, but he's still on oxygen. So they try all their best. They say they don't know what else to do again, that my son... They don't know what to do for the oxygen. So they discharge us with oxygen support. I was giving oxygen support to my son. During Shiloh, I went to the Shiloh last Saturday of the Shiloh. Then after the prayer, I came back home. I anointed my son with the mantle. Since then till now, my son has never used the oxygen support again. I say to God, who do all this? May his name alone be good. Are you clapping for Jesus? The baby for three months was on life support. But Jesus reversed everything. Amen. Please, let's listen to this documented testimony. And it is captioned, Swollen stomach, leg, and blockage healed by the anointing. Are you clapping for Jesus? I had health challenges for weeks. 
but the past one week came with excruciating pains as I was unable to defecate and my leg and stomach became unusually swollen. I ran three different tests and x-rays. According to the doctor, he said I had typhoid, including issues with my liver and kidney. Hence, I will have to undergo some treatments. I got home, dropped the result in God's presence, and gave thanks, since I was unable to sleep as usual. At few minutes past 6 a.m. on the 29th of April, 2023, Jeremiah 8.22 came alive in my spirit, and I shouted the scripture aloud. Immediately, I immediately reached out for my bottle of oil, anointed my navel on my heavily, on my heavily swollen stomach. Lo and behold, I experienced instant healing for the first time in my life. Are you clapping for Jesus? As I watched my stomach going down like a punctured tire until it went back to its normal state. Are you clapping for Jesus? I rushed to the restroom and I discovered that I could defecate without any issues whatsoever. And since then, it's been normal. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. I have come to return all the glory to God. Ajibade E is the testifier. In this anointing service, you are next in line for your testimony. In the name of Jesus. Put those blessings together for the Lord. If you're clapping for the Lord, make that hand clap bigger for all those amazing testimonies. Today, it is my privilege to welcome some special people into this service. If today is your first time worshiping at the Faith Tabernacle, may I ask that you please stand on your feet in God's presence and remain standing for the winner's warm welcome. Will the winners everywhere give the Lord a big clap offering for bringing these precious people into his presence today. The welcome package along with a card will be given to you to fill in the course of this welcome. Once you have received it, please take your seat and begin to fill it at this moment. Once you have received the special welcome package, you may now please be seated and begin filling at this point. I want to specially welcome you on the behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oyedepo. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained by God as a center of signs and wonders by divine mandate, where God turns impossible cases into open miracles. We continuously see God changing the story of men and women, old and young boys and girls, as they engage with the truth of the word that is taught upon this mountain. For over four decades, God has continued to confirm his word in this church, thereby making every member a wonder to many as they believe. I therefore want to welcome you to this home of signs and wonders. And may today's encounter usher you into realms of ear-tingling testimonies that you have always longed for in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, to all our first-time worshipers, we say to you today, welcome home. Celebrate the Lord with a big clap offering. May I please ask at this moment that all our first-time worshipers, please stand up again on your feet at this moment for a word of prayer and blessing. We want to pray for you very specially right now. This is your first time in church. Please stand up again as we pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our precious first-time worshipers. You brought them to this place of appointment to terminate their disappointment. May everyone who is here to know you as their Lord and Savior, may today be their day of salvation. May everyone that has come here looking and anticipating, looking up to you, Jesus, for open doors. May today indeed be their day of open doors. From our spiritual doors to every other door of concern, may such doors be opened up today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everyone that has been looking for a place to call home, may you open their eyes to see this place as their spiritual home. 
in the precious name of Jesus. Turn every trial into testimonies today. In Jesus' precious name. And everybody will shout the loudest, Amen. Amen. Please, all our first time worshipers, you may now please be seated. Please remember to submit your forms to the official closest to you. Once again, you are welcome. Church, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Good news. In this covenant day of open doors, it is offering time. I'm sure you want to say it louder. It shall be so for you. Please get your worship seat ready. And those of us who have our tithe ready, please package yours alongside with any other giving you covenanted with God to make available to him today. We are also reminded that our offerings can be given either in cash or check. If it is a check, please address it to Faith Tabernacle Canaan Land. Displayed on the screen are various giving channels that you can utilize for this moment. Scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, very important guide to our giving. Every man, according as he purposed, set in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly. Please take note of that, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God accepts a cheerful giver. It's not just what you give, but how you give. Giving cheerfully is one major way by which our offerings can be accepted by the Lord. If your package is properly labeled and you are ready with it, please rise to your feet as we give quality thanks to God. If you are truly joyful, you'll be thankful. Show that you are joyful right now with your thankfulness. Thank him from the depth of your heart. Raise it up before the Lord. As he receives it from your hand, you are entitled to receiving the reward for it in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And let everyone say loud, Amen. Heavenly Father, with joy, with gladness, with excitement, we offer our worship to you through our givings. Let every giving here this morning be acceptable. Yeah. Let the givings today turn each person into a financial wonder. Yeah. Let begging be over. Yeah. Let borrowing be over. Yeah. Let emptiness be over. Let nothing be tight again for tighters. Yeah. Let the windows of heaven open in the direction of all. Yeah. By the time we are returning here into your presence either midweek or next Sunday, let each person have a testimony to share. Yeah. Thank you, mighty Father. And all the saints of God in the house, say loud, Amen. Yeah. Please be seated. The offering collection will be on while the Faith Tabernacle Choir will be ministering to the Lord and to the brethren. How many of you know about we've been given a name? that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Sing all the name, the name, the name of Jesus is greater. 
we lift our hands to heaven this morning and let's begin to appreciate and glorify God for the awesome privilege that he has given you and I to stand before him this morning in his presence where there is fullness of joy at his right hand where there are pleasures forevermore will you give him quality thanks from the depth of your heart give him the glory that is due unto him Celebrate him is worthy of praise. Celebrate him is worthy of praise. Glorify him is worthy of all the honor. Lift your voice, appreciate him. Lift your voice and glorify him. Father, thank you. Blessed be your holy name. You are worthy of all the praise. Now, will you ask the Lord this morning to speak to each one of us? I've come here personally for a word from you. Lord, speak directly to me this morning. Let your word come forth with power. Let it transform every facet of my life. I will not depart from here today the way I came. Send me your word with clarity this morning. Send me your word with clarity this morning. Blessed be your holy name. Now this is the covenant day of open doors. Ask the Lord for opening of doors. By the encounter of today, let the doors of life be open. 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 Father, thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Our Father, this morning we have come before you with gratitude in our hearts for the privilege and the honor you have given us to stand before you in your presence today. Lord, our eyes are upon you. We ask that you will speak directly to each one of us. 
By your word, let every life here be transformed. We give all the praise and glory to you because we know it is done already. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand and please you may be seated in his presence. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Our line of teaching for our Sunday services for this month of May has been unlocking the supernatural. Can we say that together? And the prophetic focus for the month is I am redeemed a wonder to my world. Can we say that together? That shall be your testimony from now in the name of Jesus. Unlocking the supernatural. Unlocking the supernatural. Every believer is ordained to live a supernatural life. That is God's ordination for everyone redeemed by Jesus Christ. In John chapter 3 verse 8, the Bible tells us, it says that the wind blows where it listed. It said, thou can hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. This is why everyone that is a believer is ordained to be an entity to be wondered at. He said, Joshua, thou and the men that sit down with thee, you say you are men to be wondered at. In fact, according to scriptures, the manifestations of God in the life of the redeemed are expected to be so potent that it breaks the barrier of language, tribe, or race. That's why we are told in the book of Zechariah chapter 8 verse 23, it said, 10 men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations. Zechariah 8 and verse 23, shall take hold of all languages of the nations. He said, they shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew and say, we'll go with you because we have heard that God is with you. That is the kind of evidence that cannot be discriminated against. The one that makes you a global attraction. I see that becoming somebody's experience from now. This is so important and that's why it means that signs and wonders are to become the clear credential of those that are believers. When a man belongs to God, the ID card that he should carry is the ID card of wonders. His life being a practical wonder. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18, I and the children of the Lord has given unto me. He said we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. But God's word makes it clear that the supernatural is the product of the word received, believed, and obeyed. The supernatural is the product of the word received, believed, and obeyed. So the supernatural is our heritage in Christ but it is the product of the word received, believed, and obeyed. Never forget the Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 1 verse 12. It said, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become. So what you become is at the mercy of what you receive. The word that we receive is what determines what we become to our world. The word that we receive. So the supernatural is the product of the word received. Not only that, but also the word believed. As many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God, even to as many as believed on his name. So there must be the receiving of the word. There must be the believing of the word. And thirdly, there must be the obeying of the word. It is putting the, work, the word to work that puts the God of wonders to work on our behalf. Putting the word to work, engaging with the word, is what puts the God of wonders to work on our behalf. And that's why all through this month, we have been receiving the word. Because it's the word we receive that we can believe. And it's the word we believe that we can become when we engage with that word received. 
this morning again, as God's word comes our way, I see each one of us becoming clear pictures of lives as living wonders. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. I said, somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. But one of the vital things we must receive from the word of God is our identity. It is knowing who we are that determines what you and I can become. Knowing our identity in Christ is what provokes our destiny to manifest. Knowing our identity in Christ, who am I? What does the word of God say about me? And this is so important because God's word is the only accurate mirror for man's life. God's word is the only accurate mirror for man's life. No man can tell you who you are. Even you can't tell yourself who you are. Only the mirror of the word can tell you who you are. This is why the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 that we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord we are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the spirit of the Lord. So the word of God is a mirror that gives us the accurate picture of who you and I are in Christ. It is seeing that picture that causes us to manifest the fullness of what God has deposited in us. I pray that for each one of us this morning, God will open our eyes to see by his word. Somebody believe it, say a louder amen. amen. I said I pray for each one of us this morning that God will open our eyes to see by his word. So we have been exploring all through this month what God's word shows us about us. This morning we are going to look again at ve two very important pictures of the word of God. Who am I? Number one, I am redeemed an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. I am redeemed an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Romans chapter 8 and verse 17. Look at what the Word of God tells us here. Romans 8 and verse 17. We are made to understand there. It says, and if we are children, then we are heirs. And what kind of heirs? Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If we are children, then we are heirs. 1 John chapter 3 verse 1 down to verse 3. Look at what the Word of God tells us here. It says to us there, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. He said, Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Verse 2, it said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now, are we sons of God? So everyone that is born again is a child of God. And when he becomes a child of God, he becomes an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. An heir means one that is entitled to inheritances. One that is entitled to an inheritance. One that is entitled to an inheritance. In Acts chapter 26 and verse 18, Look at what the Bible tells us here. It said to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. Acts 26 and verse 18. It said to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. From the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. And inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith that is in me. So everyone that is a child of God is born into an inheritance. An inheritance. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and verse 4. Look at what the word of God tells us here. It tells us there, it said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus, which has, according to his abundant mercy, has, give, has begotten us also into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And look at verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. 
So everyone that is born again is born into an inheritance. Say with me, I have an inheritance in Christ. Say louder, I have an inheritance in Christ. Say like your minute, I have an inheritance in Christ. And that inheritance is the catalog of blessings packaged for the redeemed through Jesus. In the book of Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12, the Bible gives us seven classified blessings Jesus came to deliver to the redeemed. It says, saying with a loud voice, what is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings? These are our inheritances in Jesus. These are the things that belong to us in Jesus. And hear this and hear it very well. When it comes to the inheritance that God has made available for you and I in Christ, there is no one that has a less share than another. The inheritance is made available abundantly for every child of God. You know, when you have a family and they are sharing inheritance, the inheritance is distributed in various measures to different people. Is that not so? So you find out that some people may get more inheritance than the other. Maybe it is by reason of their sequence in birth. They say, oh, this is the firstborn, so he must get the big share. But look at what the Bible tells us about the church of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 and 23. The Bible tells us, he said, you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, to the holy Jerusalem, an innumerable company of angels. Look at verse 23. To the general assembly and the church of the firstborn. Now listen very carefully. That picture there does not mean that the church that belongs to the firstborn who is Jesus. No, it actually means the church of God's firstborn children. So in this kingdom, everyone is firstborn. No one has a lesser share than the other. Is somebody getting what God is saying? Everyone has equal access to their inheritance. It's what they do that determines whether they secure it or not. The inheritance is made available. Don't look at it and say, oh, this one has more inheritance of power than I have inheritance of power in God. No. Not that this one has more inheritance of riches than I have in God. No. He has inheritance available for every one of us because the church is the church of Jesus' firstborn children. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Is somebody getting what God is saying? So everyone has an inheritance in Christ. Every single person has equal access to their inheritance in Christ. But what each one does determines what becomes of their inheritance. Shout hallelujah. And the beauty of that inheritance, the Bible makes it very clear like we saw in First Peter chapter 1 and in verse 4. It said it's an inheritance that does not fade away. It doesn't reduce in value. It doesn't erode. The inheritance remains constant, never reducing. Always available and abundant for every believer. Shout hallelujah. Is somebody getting what God is saying? So this inheritance is a rich inheritance in Christ. And I see that inheritance being manifested in each one of our lives. Number two, I am redeemed to have dominion over death. I am redeemed to have dominion over death. I am redeemed to have dominion over death. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19, Look at what the word of God tells us here. It says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. It said, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So according to scriptures for the redeemed, life is a choice. Death is a choice. We have been placed in the position of authority over death. That means no devil can kill you. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. Yeah. That means no demon can kill you. 
That means no agent of wickedness can kill you. That means no accident can kill you. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. That means no sickness is permitted to kill you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55 down to verse 57. Look at what the word of God tells us here, very powerfully. It says, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? It said, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But look at verse 57 very closely. It says, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So when it comes to death, victory has been given unto us. Is somebody getting what God is saying? Victory has been given unto us. We have practical dominion over death. Practical dominion over death. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18. Look at what God's word tells us here. It says, I'm he that was dead and now I am alive and I live forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. That is Jesus speaking. I have the keys of hell and death. Somebody is saying in their heart, but I thought I heard that there are some demons that used to kill people. I thought I heard that there are some witches that used to lay, lay traps for people and destroy them on the way. I will show you how. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 and verse 15. Look at what the word of God tells us here. It says, Hebrews chapter, chapter 2, sorry, verse 14 and verse 15. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. It tells us there, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. That is their flesh and blood. He said he also took part of the same. He came as flesh and blood. That through death he may destroy him that had H-A-D, past tense, the power of death that is the devil. So he doesn't have it again. He used to have it before. So how is he killing some people now? Verse 15, he said and deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. What keeps people tied to the enemy is the fear of death. Hear what the Bible said concerning Job. Job 3 verse 25. It said, the things that I greatly feared have come upon me. The things that I fear. It is fear that gives the devil capacity to kill anyone. It is fear. It is fear. He has given us the dominion over death. One of us was sharing this um, story at the WSF yesterday. Very, very striking. During COVID-19 pandemic, a particular person outside the country was tested and they said he has COVID. And as soon as he heard he has COVID, all his organs started shutting down. So they put him on a stretcher and rushed him into the ambulance. And as they got into the ambulance, one of the uh, paramedics just thought, let us use another test kit and test him again. And they tested him and discovered that he really didn't have COVID. And all his organs woke up again. And he jumped out of, this, out of the stretcher, left the ambulance and entered his car and drove back home. The same person. Now, there was no sickness, but fear came and death was following it. Is somebody getting what God is saying? When a person looks like they're about to have an accident, somebody inside the car says, Yeah! What is happening? Fear has come. So death is giving room to knock. Is somebody getting it now? Say with me, I have dominion. I have say louder, I have dominion. I have dominion. Like your minute, I have dominion. Some years ago, I was teaching, and I began to tell the people about the contrast between Stephen and Paul. Stephen was stoned. Paul was stoned. Both were stoned for the purpose of death. One of them, after he was stoned, looked up to heaven and said, Lord, unto you, I commit my spirit. And the Bible says, he's laid down and he slept. Paul was stoned. He said, I don't commit my spirit to anywhere. They gathered around to try to bury him. He stood up because he refused to release his spirit. Now, hear this and hear it very well. Your spirit cannot be taken from you. 
it is you that releases it. Is somebody getting it now? When Jesus was to die, what did the Bible say? He yielded up the ghost. He took his spirit and submitted it for the purpose of your redemption and my redemption. That's why he said, no man can take my life from me. A power to lay down. A power to take it again. So the question is this. Why will you lay down now? Where are you hurrying to? Where are you running to? I've decided that I will not join the bricklayers in heaven that are building mansions. I will finish my time here. And the time has been allotted. Except Jesus comes, it is 120 years. The road is still long. The road is still long. The road is still long. I refuse to go anywhere. Is somebody getting what God is saying? No one can take your spirit. No one can take your spirit. So after teaching in that service, one of us in the service had a particular crisis. And she said she saw herself just going like this. And she began to pray, Lord, unto you. I commit. Then she remembered. He said, Lord, I don't commit my spirit. I take it back. I don't commit it. I take it back. <laughs> I collect it. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say with me, I have dominion. Hallelujah. Say louder, I have dominion. Hallelujah. What does that mean? Fear must not be given any room. Fear must not be given any room. Don't imagine death. Don't accommodate the thought of death. At every point in time, speak life. At every point in time, speak life. Give no room to the accommodation of the thoughts of death. Keep speaking life. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Keep speaking life. Keep speaking life. It doesn't matter what is going on around you. It doesn't matter what the situation looks like. Keep speaking life. That is the difference maker. Never allow any thought. Don't let it seep into your mind. And when the devil tries to introduce it, speak life to reject it. Is somebody getting what God is saying? Speak life to reject it. You keep declaring it, you keep declaring it, and you keep subduing the power of death. I see that becoming somebody's experience from now. Yeah. You believe it, say it loud, amen. Yeah. I say you believe it, say it loud, amen. Yeah. God's servant, our father, sharing in the first service, talked about how he taught on the subject victory over death, 1983. Victory over death. He taught, we, the light was palpable. Not long after that, the enemy came to try and knock on the door with death, but he subdued it by light. When, the, when, when he was laying down there and everything looked like it was turning, suddenly, he said he heard a voice, what are you doing here? He said, I don't know too. He jumped out of the bed, entered into the car, and drove off. He rode on the head of the devil. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You see, the truth is this. The devil is not as powerful as he has been pretending to be. He's not as powerful as he has been pretending to be. There is practical victory and dominion granted unto us over the forces of death. So let no one intimidate you. In fact, don't let the records and histories of the past intimidate you. Oh, they say, oh, boy, in this family, oh, uh, every, every few years, somebody, somebody used to die like that. Somebody used to die like that. Tell them it is minus me. My own, I have dominion. Is somebody getting it? I can't remember, I can't forget the testimony of a particular young man. At that time, we less than 25. In their family, they had a notorious man. The man calls people every year to tell them when it's their turn to die. So the man... This young man was outside the country. And the man called him, couldn't reach out to him. So he sent somebody to call him and tell him that it's his turn. <laughs> the young man fired back. He said, tell him that I said, 
within seven days, his first son is dead. And after that, he is also dead. The one who was killing others died within that, that set season. Why? Because he recognized that he had dominion. Don't let the enemy make you shake inside your shoes. No. You are loaded with heaven's dominion. Is somebody getting what God is saying? I said, is somebody getting what God is saying? Look at this scripture, Acts chapter 2 and verse 24. And look at what the word of God tells us here. Acts 2 verse 24. He said, whom God had raised up, having loosed the pains of death. Why? Because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. It was not possible for it to hold him down. And the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 and 19 that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. He said that you may know the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. He said, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power which one verse 20 which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead so the same power that made it impossible for death to hold Jesus dwells in the redeemed no wonder we are told in Romans chapter 8 and verse 11 if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He said, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. There is a life-giving spirit inside you. That means there is no room for death. Is somebody getting what God is saying? I said, is somebody getting what God is saying? So don't let the devil ever deceive you to make a negative pronouncement. You keep speaking life because there's a life-giving spirit in you. Now, hear this and hear very well. I discovered. I want you to see the power of words. The spirit in man entered into man by words. Is that true? Entered as God created man. He formed him and the Bible says he breathed into him the breath of life. And man became a living being or a living spirit. How did he breathe into him? He spoke unto him words. And those words entered into him as life. So the spirit of man enters him by words. It means that man can also release his spirit by words. That's what Stephen did. Unto you I commit my spirit. With that he released his spirit. Is somebody getting it now? So you must keep speaking words of life. So that that life giving spirit inside of you can keep manifesting practically. I see that becoming our experience. As God's servant has been prophesying over the years, this commission, it will keep being spoken of us that they don't die young there. And like he said this morning again, he said, some years from now, you will start seeing people who have been here all of this time at the age of 120 standing on the altar saying, today I'm 120 years old. If you believe you are going to be one of them, say loud, amen. I said, if you believe you are going to be one of them, say loud, amen. Yeah. Praise God. I said, praise God. Now, how do I unlock the supernatural? How do I unlock the supernatural? It's important to note that the Holy Ghost is the grand commander of the supernatural. The Holy Ghost is the grand commander of the supernatural. If you look at George chapter 2, verse 28 to 30, speaking prophetically about the arrival of the Holy Ghost, he said, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons will prophesy. Your, 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 your sons will see vision. Your young men will see vision. Old men will dream dreams and so forth. He said, and then as a result of that outpouring, he said, I will, do, I will show wonders in the heaven. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. That's talking about the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. So when the Holy Ghost comes down, among other things, there are manifestations of wonders. Manifestations of wonders. That's why you discover when it came down the day of Pentecost, chapter 2 of Acts, by chapter 3, miracles started happening. Wonders, signs, miracles started happening. 
So part of the manifestation of the Holy Ghost is the manifestation of signs and wonders. But we must continue to desire an increase in our level of anointing. So it's not enough to say I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. No, we must keep desiring an increase, an increase, an increase. I said to us, the Holy Ghost came down in Acts chapter 2. By chapter 3 of Acts, manifestation of signs and wonders began. By chapter 4, the apostles and the church gathered together to pray again and to ask for greater effect of the anointing. Acts chapter 4 verse 29 to 31. He said that signs and wonders may be done in the name of thine holy child Jesus. And as a result of that verse 33, he said with great power gave the apostles witness to the resurrection of Christ and great grace was upon them all. So they went into greater dimension of power because they continued to desire an increase in the level of the anointing. Let's understand this this morning. The anointing is in levels and our level in the anointing is what determines our level of command. Our level in the anointing is what determines our level of command. So how much command you and I have in terms of our provocation of the supernatural is determined by our level of anointing. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. If you look through scripture, you discover that Jesus Christ commanded the supernatural without limit. And the reason was because he had the spirit without measure. John chapter 3 verse 34. He commanded the supernatural without limit. Because he had the spirit without measure. So you and I must ensure that we keep pressing on into higher dimensions by a strong desire. We must have a crave to keep pushing into greater measures of the anointing. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Now the question we must ask is how do we keep growing in this measure? How can we keep moving from one dimension to the other? How can our, our authority for the command of signs and wonders be increased? We look at three important keys quickly. Number one is praying kingdom advancement prayers. Those who advance the kingdom in prayer are advanced by God in power. Those who advance the kingdom in prayer, they are advanced by God in power. Luke chapter 9 verse 28 and 29, as Jesus was praying, the fashion of his countenance was altered. By verse 43, he said the people were amazed at the mighty power of God. Those who advance the kingdom in prayer, they are advanced by God in power. That is why we must understand that the altar of prayer is not just an altar of answers, but it's an altar of power. God does not only give us answer in prayer. God gives us power by praying. So the more we stay in prayer, the more we grow in power. That is why we must become addicted to advancing the kingdom of God. Not just praying elementary prayers. Lord, give me this. Lord, give me that. No, advancing the kingdom. Those who show that, who demonstrate their commitment to pushing the kingdom forward, God pushes them forward in power. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So we must become committed to standing in prayer. Every time you are praying for the lost, you are praying for brethren in the church, you are praying for your converts, you are praying for your home cell, you are praying for the church, you are praying for your unit. As you are spending time, yes, God is giving answers, but God is also growing his power in you. He's giving you access to greater dimensions of power. That is the effect. That is the manifestation. When a nail stays beside a magnet, it doesn't matter what the nail is doing by the magnet. But because it is by the magnet, it is a matter of time. The power, the magnetic power in the magnet begins to manifest through the nail. Is somebody getting it now? Just by reason of connectivity. 
So it's not that you are just praying and asking for power, but as you are praying advancing the kingdom, God is advancing you in power. You are growing in the magnetic field of God's power around you. That will be somebody's experience from now. Number two is going after souls to the point of establishment. It's another requirement that positions us into greater manifestations of the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Going after the lost. Going after the lost is another vital tool. If you look at what the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 9 and verse 1, it said Jesus called the 12 and he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. He gave them power and authority and he told them ahead, I give you power and authority. And they went and began to manifest the power. In Luke chapter 10 and verse 1, he said he appointed 70 also and sent them two by two to all the places where himself will come. And this time he didn't even give them a clue of what has been done. And the Bible tells us in verse 17, the 70 returned again with joy, saying even devils were subject to us with, through thy name. Even devils. And Jesus told them in verse 19, he said, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You see, Jesus was making them understand, as you are going for me, you keep growing in power. As you are going for me, you keep growing in power. Every step you take, as far as pursuing the loss is concerned, is a step to increase in the dimension of power. Mark chapter 16 verse 15, it said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 17, he said, and he that this sign shall follow them that believe. And verse 20, as they went, manifesting the instruction he gave, he began to confirm the word with signs and wonders following. So every time you're on the go, keep reminding yourself, it's another opportunity to grow in the manifestation of God's power. So as we keep going, we keep growing. As we keep pursuing the lost, we keep expanding our access to the flow of God's power. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. We keep expanding our access to the flow of God's power. Number three is given to the cause of the kingdom. Of the gospel, sorry. Given to the cause of the gospel. As we keep doing that, we keep also gaining access to greater manifestations of power. Particularly as far as kingdom prosperity is concerned. It's true giving. It's true giving. There's no other way. That is the avenue that God has created. Thou shalt remember the Lord your God for it. Is it that give it the power to get wealth? That one comes by engaging in the covenant. Practical covenant practice. That's what provokes it. So if you look at all of this, you will discover that you don't grow in these graces just by desiring it. You must engage the requirements. Keep the altar of prayer on fire. Keep yourself committed to going after the lost. Keep advancing the kingdom with the resources at your disposal. And you keep seeing yourself increasing in supernatural authority. Let us recognize, however, that authority in the kingdom is conferred. You don't just take it, it's conferred. And it is conferred not on children, but on the mature. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon the shoulder of the son. So it takes maturity to gain authority. It takes maturity to gain what? Authority. If you are going to gain authority, then we must attain maturity. Until we attain maturity, we are not candidates for authority. And maturity in the kingdom is a product of two things. We heard that very powerfully in the second service. Two things. Quality nutrition and exercise. Quality nutrition. Feeding on the word and then walking the word. That's how you attain maturity. The Bible makes it clear to us, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4 verse 4. But then having eaten the word, we must walk it out by obedience. Putting it to work. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 14. Look at what God's word tells us there. Hebrews 5 and verse 14. 
It says to us there, Hebrews 5 and verse 14, but strong may belong to them who are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. They have used the word, so they have grown by the word. So we grow by our engagement, our engagement of the word received. I see grace coming upon each one of us to keep engaging the word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, I see grace coming upon each one of us to keep engaging the word in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But we must understand that this authority, once it's conferred, we need a consciousness of it. That's another thing. There must be a, you must be conscious of it. We have heard God's servant our father say here many times, except God did not send me. How many of us have heard that statement before? And you know that whatever follows that statement is always dangerous. Anything that, 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 is, that is declaring the consciousness of the authority from which he's speaking. We need that consciousness for the command of the supernatural. I see grace coming upon us for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Now today is our covenant day of open doors. And it's also a special anointing service. By the anointing today, impossible doors shall be opened on our behalf. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. Yeah. Now, let's take note of this. The anointing of the Holy Spirit opens impossible doors. Impossible doors. Impossible doors. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 down to verse 3. It says there, Thus said the Lord unto Cyrus, <laughs> his anointed, whose right hand I've holding. To subdue nations before him, I will loose the loins of kings. To open before him the two-leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. I will cut in sunder the bars of iron. He said, I will give unto thee the treasures of darkness, the hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by name, am the God of Israel. When the door looks impossibly locked, the anointing is the key to open the door. It opens impossible doors. Impossible doors. We saw the child that was carried on this altar this morning. That child was on life support, put on oxygen. They had done all they knew how to do. They said the sickness that caused it has left, but the child cannot breathe yet. And then the mother came took the anointing oil and took the mantle and administered it on the child. And from that day, the child began breathing well. That is, that impossible door was opened by the anointing. Whatever represents an impossible door in any one of our lives, it shall be opened by the anointing. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said it shall be opened by the anointing. But it's not enough for you and I to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Which is like our starting point in the journey of power and the anointing. We must remain committed to growing in the anointing. Again, we mentioned it earlier. You look at the story of the apostles. They began with the power of God coming upon them in Acts chapter 2. By chapter 4, the great power of God came upon them. And they kept growing from one dimension of the anointing to the other. I see each one of us changing levels in the anointing in the name of Jesus. But there are two conditions that must be met and kept to sustain the flow of the anointing. And we conclude with this this morning. Number one is the new anointing can only be put in new wine skins. That talks about newness of life. God's servant has said in the first service, that new levels of the anointing requires new lifestyle. We must ensure that we are living our lives in accordance with the pleasure of God. Proverbs 1.23 says, Turn at my reproof, and I will pour my spirit upon you. Let's be careful in this day of pollution where people are trying to give excuses for the things that are displeasing to God. 
When a man becomes born again as a new creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It can't remain new if old things don't pass away. Is somebody getting it now? So it is not enough to say I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, you are made so by redemption, but you remain so by practice. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. There is no other way. So we must ensure we maintain a new lifestyle. The life that is pleasing to God. Number two, next levels of anointing demands a test. You must have a test, a hunger and a crave. Isaiah 44 verse 3, I'll pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I'll pour my spirit upon your, off, your, upon your offspring, upon your seed and my blessing upon your offspring. So the outpouring of the spirit comes in the direction of our test. That is why we must never lose our hunger. Never lose our test. Thank God for the manifestations we have seen, but there are greater levels. Is somebody getting it? Thank God for the testimonies we have seen so far, but there are higher dimensions. So we must remain hungry. We must remain hungry. I see grace coming upon us for this. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be expectant today, because every impossible door will be opened on your behalf. Amen. Lift your hand before the Lord and let's give thanks to him. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name. You are worthy of all the praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Somebody believe, say a loud amen. amen. Before we go further this morning, you are here. You have not surrendered your life to Jesus. That's where to start from. That's the starting point. That is the starting mark. You can't walk in the supernatural until you are born again. Wherever you are this morning, you say, Pastor, I want to become born again. I want to become a child of God. I want to begin to walk with God in truth and in deed. If you are here in that condition this morning, quickly stand on your feet. I want to pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to be born again. I want to become a child of God in truth and in deed. Quickly stand on your feet. God bless you. 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 Thank you, Lord. Secondly, there are those who need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. Something has gone wrong. You know it inside you. You are not right with God. You have walked away. Your, your, your heart is no longer connected. Nobody may know it, but inside you, you know that you are not right with God. Wherever you are right now, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus and have a brand new beginning. Quickly also stand on your feet. I want to pray with you. You want to start afresh. You want to have a new beginning. Quickly stand on your feet. Give Jesus a big hand as they stand everywhere. He's worthy of all the praise and of all the glory. Thank you, Lord. Now, for those who have stood in response to the first or second call, please suspend feeling of form for a moment and lift up your right hand before the Lord. And pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, loud and clear, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. But I know you died for me. On the third day, you rose again just to save me. Jesus, come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. I will follow you. No turning back. I will serve you. No turning back. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Keep your hand lifted as I pray. Father, thank you for these precious people. They have responded to your call right now. And we ask that you grant to each one of them grace to keep following after you all the days of their lives and never ever turn back. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Congratulations. It's a new day. Hallelujah. Please take time to complete the form that has been given to you and submit it to any of the officials that are standing beside you. They will give you a little card. It's a we love you card. Right after the service concludes, you will take that card to any of the new convert tents. You will see the tents branded new convert tent, and they are outside the major entrances to the tabernacle. You drop the card right there and they will give you a gift item from the church. That gift is to help to build your faith and help to advance you in your walk with the Lord. Please take advantage of it and you will be blessed. We also have our Believers Foundation class, which takes place every Monday, tomorrow Monday, and the upper Monday. You just attend just two sessions of the class. 
just tomorrow and the upper Monday and to give you a firm foundation to enjoy a glorious walk with the Lord. With the information you give us on that card, we'll be sending you an SMS to tell you the location that is closest to you. There's a location not far from where you live. So just take advantage of it and you will be blessed. If there's any reason why you can't make the physical class, we also have the class online. And that class is on demand at any time. So you have that on the website that is right on the screen. Once you go there, you'll be given necessary direction on how to take advantage of the class and you will enjoy a firm foundation for a glorious walk with the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, congratulations. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shall we all rise on our feet, everybody? Right now, first of all, will you lift your hand and let's give thanks to God for his word. Father, thank you for your word that has come our way. We give you the praise and we give you the, the glory. Accept our thanksgiving. Now begin to make your declarations concerning the open doors that you are expecting. Begin to make your declarations. Begin to make your declarations concerning the open doors you are expecting. Is it the door of fruitfulness? Open up today. Is it the door of your business breakthrough? Open up today. Whatever open doors you desire. Is it the door of your promotion? Open up today. Open up today. This is the covenant day of open doors. Impossible doors must be opened. Impossible doors must be opened. Is it the door of your marital settlement? Open up today. Make your decrees. Make your declarations. Do it in faith. Make your decrees. And make your declarations. Do it in faith. Command the doors to open. Command the doors to open. Command the doors to open. Is it the door of your healing? Command it to open up. Whatever door you desire, command it right now to open up this moment, to open up this hour, to open up this day. Command the opening of every closed door. Command it right now. Issue that command full of authority. Issue that command full of conviction. Now lift your hand to heaven and begin to glorify God. Father, thank you and blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Will you give Jesus a big, big hand as we receive our Father? Make that hand bigger for Jesus. Hallelujah. No door of favor shall ever be shut against you anymore. The same way the anointing answered on the life of Cyrus. How he went before him and made the cool help pass straight. How he subdued nations under him. How he blasted open the gates of brass and breaking under the bars of iron. In the same vein, everybody of hell on your path of going forward shall be broken to pieces. This covenant open door will open every aspect of everyone's life into the realm of fortune. You shall not know the meaning of hardship again. You shall not know the meaning of hardship again. What I say to one, I say to all. Whatever he said to Cyrus, is anointed. He's saying to everyone, that guy is anointed. Therefore, today marks the end of blocked road for you. As Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit, nothing could stop him. By the power of the Holy Ghost through the mission of the anointing oil today, no gang up of hell shall be able to stop your way forward. In the name of Jesus. Amen. For the word we just had, give the Lord a big hand of praise.
Um, please be seated for a moment. The mystery of anointing oil was introduced in Exodus chapter 30. And in verse 31, he said, And this shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. So its impact is generational. Its mission applies to every generation. Therefore, by the anointing today, whatever that anointing did before in the lives of many patriarchs from Old to the New Testament shall be done in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And it shall come to pass in that day that the burden of the wicked shall be taken from off your shoulder. Isaiah 10 and verse 27. And his yoke from your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The same you that came here to this service, it's not the same you going out. Yeah. You will experience a rolling away of burdens from your shoulder. Yeah. And a destruction of everything choking your life. Yeah. Every choking area of anyone's life is turned loose today. Yeah. Everything choking your spiritual life is destroyed today. Yeah. Everything choking your business and career life is destroyed today. Yeah. Everything choking your marital destiny is destroyed today. Yeah. Every choking effect of space and enchantment is destroyed today. Every enchant enchantment against any one of us is now turned to none and void. Yeah. Every closed door is blasted open today. Yeah. You are working to your miracle job this week. You are stepping to your marital destiny this week. Yeah. Everything the devil has put to silence will begin to speak again. Yeah. By this anointing, everyone appointed to death is now liberated. Yeah. Every agent of the devil planning your death will die in your place. Whatever has been stopping things from working in your favor is finally destroyed today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything works here. Everything works here. And because you're on board this flight from today, everything keeps working in your favor. You know the mystery behind everything working? We know that all things work together for good. To them that love God. Not to those who came to use God. To them that love God and who are doing his bidding. We know, not that we are guessing, we know. We know. We know. I pray that by this anointing, the love of God will be shared abroad in your heart. Yeah. And nothing shall be able to separate you from the love of God. Yeah. And good things will never stop happening in your life. Yeah. Good things will never stop happening in your life. Yeah. Good things will never stop happening in your life. Yeah. And it's starting from this service. It's starting right now with you. You're going to be hearing good news after this service. 
Good news from everywhere. The week shall be a week of good news for you. In the name of Jesus. No one dies young in your household. You shall not die young. No one here shall ever bury their children. You will not bury your grandchildren. Your family shall be known as a family of old age. Not just old age, a good old age. A good old age. And so shall it be. Now, take your bottles of oil up and let it be blessed so it can be turned to the holy anointing oil. Everyone lift up your bottles. The content of these bottles is hereby declared the holy anointing oil. Yeah. For all our first time worshippers and new converts, every third Sunday of every month is our special anointing service all through our churches worldwide. Always come with your bottle of oil because the fresher the oil, the greater the impact. Now, in the precious name of Jesus, this is torn into the holy anointing oil. Yeah. And by it, burdens shall be rolled away. Yeah. Yoke shall be destroyed. Yeah. The two lift gates shall be kept open. The gates of brass shall be broken to pieces. The bars of iron shall be cut asunder. Nations be subdued under your anointing. Grace to take responsibility for spiritual growth. Receive it by this anointing. Grace to crave for next levels of empowerment. Receive it by this anointing. Yeah. Your spiritual life shall never be stagnated anymore. Yeah. It's a new day. Yeah. It's a new day. Yeah. It's a new day. Yeah. Now, you have in your hand right now the holy anointing oil. Put a little of that on your fingertips and straight to your forehead and begin to make your proclamations, your declarations. New day, new dawn, new beginning, new beginning, new day, new dawn, new beginning, new day, new dawn, new beginning, new day, new dawn, new beginning on everyone's spiritual life. Our family, our business and career, our vocations, our health. New day. Every attack of sickness is over. Attack of disease is over. Enchantment of the wicked is destroyed. Brand new day. Brand new day. You are singing your new song. You are singing your new song. You are singing your new song. You are singing your new dawn song. Doors of favor are opening to you right now. Doors of favor are opening to you right now. Doors of peace and serenity in your spiritual life, in your family life, in your business, in your career, over your children. Brand new day. Brand new day. Every agent of them will be with your destiny. They go down for you. They go down for you. They go down for you. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. One thing. Is there any particular door you want to see open this week? One. Go ahead and name it before the Lord. Door you must open to me this week. No, you must open. You must open to me this week. 
I have a covenant of open doors with Jesus. Because I'm a keeper of his word. And I don't deny him before men. I have a covenant of open doors that cannot be shut day and night. This particular door must open this week. This door must open to me this week. Call it by name. You're a contractor, there's nothing to contract. Call it by name. You have been seeking for a job all this time. Call it by name. Is this week. This week. This week. Whatever time you are ready by your faith, God is ever ready. This week. This week. There has been dead silence over your marital destiny. This week, it must speak. It must speak. You must hear good news. This week, you must hear good news. This week. Your health has been threatening and threatening. No, this is your week of restoration. Back to health and wholeness. Your week of restoration. Back to health and wholeness. Your week of restoration. Back to health and wholeness. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. Every declaration on your life today is turned to manifestation. Yeah. Prophets are God's instrument of turning loose the supernatural. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, this is finally your week. The God of this commission will make you to laugh this week. Your laughter begins after this service. You receive calls of laughter. SMS pregnant with laughter. WhatsApp message pregnant with laughter. You wake up in the morning into a week of laughter. You get to work a day of laughter. So shall it be for you. No weeping in your household. No sorrowing in your household. Anyone under hospitalization right now in anybody's family is recovered back to health. Something is turning right now where they are. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we have a tradition of scripture. In taking a shot of the oil, it has rolled out on two testimonies to the glory of God. And now for all that believe, the verdict of Matthew 3, 11 and 12, we are going to take this shot of oil. As the oil goes inside, it's going in with the fan and the fire. The fan will blow together all the chaff in your body and my body. <laughs> and we burn it with unquenchable fire. Yeah. This liquid fire will go inside and restore every organ of anyone's body back to perfect function. Yeah. And the glory will go back to God. Yeah. All that believe in this mystery Take a little of this oil on the cup of your cup and take a shot of it and celebrate God in praise. Close your bottles, lift up your two hands and give glory to God. Give him thanks, everyone. Celebrate your victory over sickness and disease. Celebrate your victory over any form of breakdown of the organs in your body. Celebrate your triumph over the threat of death. Celebrate the open door of this week that shall never be shut again. Give him glory and praise, everybody. Magnify him. Glorify him. He is Lord of all. In Jesus' name. Congratulations to everyone. Welcome to your week of laughter. Welcome to your week of celebration. Welcome to your week of trial. Next Sunday is the last day of our covenant day of open doors. Amen.
And God was speaking to me. He said, I want to show them how to keep the doors of favor open all through their lives. Come ready for it. Your church has never suffered a closed door till now. After 42 years, your life will never know a closed door again. <laughs> Come prepared. The Lord spoke to me to make each month a particular covenant day. You don't rush it. You take it step by step by step so men can enter into it in fullness. My God, as the Lord lives, your journey shall be a journey of open doors for life. <laughs> what has taken place this May will be in your record for life <laughs> as a season where God changed your level completely. <laughs> we have the flyer for next week. Advertise Jesus with joy. Identify with him openly and unashamedly. We have done that, they mocked us for God. They mocked us before God could make us. Expose yourself to their mockery so you can expose yourself to the maker. Let them mock you so God can make you. Man, they, they mocked us and mocked us. All kinds of statements. I mean, on Sabbath statements. But God has turned the mockery to envy. Allow them to mock you. Hello, friend. Come over to our church this coming Sunday. You own your company. You can't call them to pray. What owner are you? You are ashamed of the one who gave you the company. What a believer. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> if you are ashamed of me in this world, I'll be ashamed of you before my father and his angels. End of transaction, that's the meaning. Angels are God's agents of transaction from heaven to the earth. When God has shame, he says, agents, hold on. I have nothing doing with that man. May you not stop heaven's transaction in your direction. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's surprise ourselves this coming Sunday mm -hmm. by everybody working at bringing at least one person yes. into church to meet with Jesus, the destiny molder. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Yeah. You know what I celebrate in my life today? The lives I had privilege of encounter with that God has changed radically. Yes. That's the greatest joy I have. And I know God has that plan for you. Yes. So be an agent to somebody's change of story yes. by getting them here in love. Yes. Pay their way when it's needed, if you're able. If you're not able, joyfully tell your brother or sister around you, I have two converts, I have two fellows I've invited that want to come to church but I don't have the means. And they will gladly do it. Every genuine winner is a giver. Every non-giver is here to be a member of the family. Giving is our culture here. We gave a whole of Sunday service offering to someone in need, 1984. The whole of the church offering for that Sunday went to him. It was the Mekisedek of that service and with joy and gladness, yet we never borrowed as a church. Come on, give the Lord praise. <laughs> now stretch forth your hands, and as the Holy Ghost will breathe upon these flyers, and turn each flyer to a spiritual magnet, attracting multitudes to church, to meet with Christ, for their change of story desires, Help me pray that prayer, everybody. Stretch forth your hand. When I say stretch forth your hand, stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand towards this flyer. Holy Ghost, breathe upon these flyers. Turn them to spiritual magnets. Let them lead to the change of life of many. Bring many to the kingdom. Establish them in the faith. And change their story as they desire. In Jesus' precious name, it is done. Those who add value to others never lose value. Your life will never lose value. Those who want it to be well for others, it keeps on being well with them. It will remain well with you. Lift up your hands and give God thanks.
Thank you, Jesus. He deserves more praise. Will you wave your beautiful hands and bless him some more, bless him some more, bless him some more, everybody? Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are prayed. All our new converts, you are reminded that as you are going out, at the new converts, the first-time worshippers, your card is to be presented at any of the um, tent at the main towards the main entrances for you to pick your special gift from the church. Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship? Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations. Amen. We we'll quickly file out so we can start the first service for those who are coming in for the first service. For those of us who may have come in after offering collection has been um, um, done, please look at the officials uh, with the sign in their hands where to drop your offerings.
Jesus a big hand and take your seat. <laughs> Gladly, I'd like to welcome each and every one of us on the behalf of God's servant in the house to this covenant day of open doors, the third in the series, coupled with our special monthly anointing service. Give God a big hand for this beautiful day. In this fourth service, our call to worship shall be taken from Psalm 126. Psalm 126. And we shall be reading responsively. I begin. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Verse 2. The Lord hath done great things for us, wherefore we are glad. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing a precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. This verse of the scripture shall be fulfilled in your life today. Yeah. You will return rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Yeah. You are welcome again. Let's give God another big hand. Hallelujah. Please, let's listen attentively to the Faith Tabernacle announcement for this fourth service. Number one, praise the Lord. Please be reminded that we are all expected to continue to follow up on all the harvest from the prophetic weeks of harvest, ensuring that they attend both Sunday and midweek services, WSF meetings, the Believers Foundation class, and also partake in water baptism. Remember, God who sees your tireless labor in secret will reward you openly. Say loud, amen. amen. Number two, good news. Friday, May 19, 2023, was the 19th convocation ceremony of Landmark University was the ninth, ninth convocation ceremony of Landmark University. Let's give Jesus another big hand. The graduating class included 617 first degrees, 58 second degrees, and nine PhDs. If you are clapping, make it bigger, make it better. To God alone be all the glory. Number three, praise the Lord. Believers Foundation Class BFC for all our new converts and new members holds tomorrow Monday. Note that this can either be online on the link display, that is bfc.lfcww.org, or live at any of our BFC centers across Lagos, Ort, and Environs. Details on the closest location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via SMS. The time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number four, good news. The online sales of admission forms into Faith Academy Network of Schools for GSS-1 supplementary admission and GSS-2 transfer admission 
for 2023-2024 session commences on Monday, 22nd of May through to Sunday, 2nd July, 2023. Interested parents and guardians are to visit the EC's official website, that is www.eclfcww.org for the purchase of forms. Note that the scheduled examination date for the two classes, that is the JSS 1 and JSS 2, is Saturday, 15th July, 2023, while the interview date is Saturday, 5th of August, 2023. Number five, good news. Water baptism holds this coming Saturday at all our facilities across Lagos and Otta, where we have baptistries. All, both young and old, who are yet to be baptized in water by immersion, since they believed, are required to partake of this vital kingdom mystery. Remember to come with a change of raiment, and the time is 7.30 a.m. Number six, praise the Lord. There is no doubt that we are all being visited by God in this season. Therefore, send your testimonies to the links displayed on the screen. That is, testimonies at davidoedipoministries.com or testimonies at lfcww.org. Number seven, Covenant Hour of Prayer continues tomorrow Monday to Saturday here in Canaan land and at all our designated locations across Lagos and Otter. The time again is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number six, praise the Lord. Midweek communion service holds this coming Wednesday, both here in Canaan land and at all zonal fellowship centers in Lagos, Otter, and Environs. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion and the time is 6 p.m. Number nine, Winner's Satellite Fellowship. Our House to House Fellowship holds this Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Otter. Remember that we shall be praying for one another. Invite a neighbor to partake in this fellowship time and don't miss this for anything. The time is 5 to 6 p.m. Finally, number 10, praise the Lord. Next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle shall be the final part of our covenant day of open doors. In the month of May, it shall also double as our end of month special Thanksgiving marriage and children dedication service. In this service, God shall not only be showing us how to secure open doors in our journey, but how to keep the doors of favor open to us all through life. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Come along with your converts, invitees, and other loved ones. We shall be holding four services, and the times again are 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m., 9.50 a.m., and 11.45 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Please give the Lord a big, big, big hand. In this service, it is testimony time. Please, let's listen attentively to these documented testimonies and yours will be the next. Amen. Number one, miracle conception despite doctor's report. My wife and I got married two years ago. Thereafter, we trusted God for the fruit of the womb. Six months into our marriage, we went to the hospital and surgery was carried out on my wife. Thereafter, we were told she would not be able to conceive naturally. We were given the option of IVF. And the month we were preparing for the procedure, my wife was confirmed pregnant. God saw her through and the delivery was successful. Today, we have our baby boy. I return all the glory to God. 
The testifier is Pastor Henry Oyemari. Put your blessed hands together for Jesus. Number two, healed of strange illness. I felt sick and went to the hospital for a checkup, and I was told it was malaria. But despite the medication, the sickness persisted. Since then, it has been over two years with the same sickness. I was growing thin, and I couldn't do things I used to do, and I was rushed to the hospital by a friend. I was invited to this church last Sunday by a member, assuring me that the Lord will heal me and take away the sicknesses. I believed him and came for the service for the first time. I was determined to receive my healing, so I gave my life to Christ. After which I partook of the anointing oil, and immediately I felt something strange in my body. Put your hands together for Jesus. Since then, the things I used to feel, I don't feel them anymore. <laughs> to be sure of my healing, when I woke up on Monday morning, I decided to do the things I could not do before. This time, I wasn't, this time I wasn't weak. Rather, I was full of strength. Now, I am totally healed and made strong. Put your hands together for Jesus. The testifier is Andrew Anthony. In this service, God will give you your testimony. If that hand is for Jesus, you can make it bigger and louder. This afternoon is my privilege to welcome some special people into the service. If today is your first time worshiping at the Faith Tabernacle on a Sunday like this, may I ask that you please stand on your feet in God's presence and remain standing for the winner's warm welcome. Give Jesus a big hand as these precious people stand everywhere. Our God is worthy of the praise. If that hand is for Jesus, you can make it bigger and louder. It's worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. Please remain standing. Our officials will put into your hand a welcome package. Along with it, they will give you a little card that you need to fill. And as soon as you receive those two items, please take your seat and begin to fill the card in the course of this welcome. Make sure you receive those two items before you are seated and begin to fill that card given to you in the course of this welcome. I want to specially welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained by God as a mountain of divine intervention where every issue that has defied solution can be supernaturally perfected. Our turnaround God has been at work in this commission for over four decades, surprising members of this church with unimaginable testimonies as they believe. Since God is no respecter of persons, expect the turnaround God to visit you also upon this mountain as you believe. I want to welcome you today to this turnaround family and may today be your entry into the realms of divine intervention that will result in the delivery of your long-awaited testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe, say a loud amen. amen. Therefore, to all our first-time worshipers, we say, welcome home. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. He is worthy of all the praise. May I ask for all our first-time worshipers to please rise one more time for a word of prayer and blessing. All first-time worshipers, please rise one more time this time for a word of prayer and blessing. Now bow your head as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you today for these precious people that you have drawn by your mighty hand. You have brought them here for a blessing. Therefore, we declare each one of them blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, whatever any of these ones may have desired of you and left behind as a concern to come to your presence, let those issues be converted into testimonies. Above all, for any one of them that is yet to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, may today be for each one the day of their salvation. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Please, you may be seated. Ensure that your forms are completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Once again, you are welcome and God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody.
Let somebody shout the Lord. Hallelujah. Right now in this service, it's offering time. So shall it be for us all in Jesus' name. Therefore, if you haven't done so, this is the right time quickly and properly package your worship seed. You have your tithe here today as well. 10% of God's increase is upon your life. Put it together and any other kind of seed you have brought to worship God, please package them and do that honorably. Please be reminded also of the various channels of giving. If you want to take advantage of any of our electronic giving channels, please check the screen right now. You'll find all the required information there. You can give in cash, and in case you are writing check for this seed, please do so in honor of Faith Tabernacle Canaan Land. Praise God. God's word is very clear about giving. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. It says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So when we give, we are honoring who? Honoring God. It says, as we do so, verse 10, your bands shall be filled with plenty. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. And your presses shall burst out with new wine. Amen. Overflowing financial blessing. Amen. That becomes the portion of every giver today. Amen. If you receive it, let your amen show it. Amen. Please rise upon your feet with joy and gratitude to God who is never in need. Lift up your seat unto God and present your seat to him. Thank him. Praise him. Worship him. For it's out of the abundance of what he has given that we are giving back unto him. Father, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please keep your seat lifted. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for putting seed in our hands today. For every seed sower, let our seed be acceptable. And for every giver today, may these hands never know lack anymore. We begin to enter into financial open doors, even beginning from this season. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, I'm believing. Amen. Please be seated. Cast your seat joyfully as we welcome the Faith Tabernacle Choir to minister. Ah! 
If you know you are indeed free this afternoon and magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Bless his name, exalt his name together this fourth service. Let's give him praise. Let's give him glory. Let's give him all honor. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We magnify your name. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. And be thou glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ. Since the first covenant day of open doors, doors have been opening. Today being the third one, the doors will open wider again. Yeah. Will you go before the Lord and tell him, Lord, make today's covenant day of open doors answer in my life. I want the reality of it. I want to enjoy the practical, practicality of it. This day must represent the day where doors are open for me. Lift your voice right now as you speak to the Lord. This day I must see and enjoy open doors in every area, every department of my life in the name of Jesus Christ. This day will answer to his name. It must answer to his name. It's already answering to its name. I'm living here with everlasting doors open before me. I give you thanks and I give you praise. Blessed be your name forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. Heavenly Father, all eyes are on you in this fourth service. We came hungry. We came thirsty. We are here for you. Not here for any man. Therefore, we ask that by the blood of the Lamb, you give us access into this holy world today. Holy Spirit, over to you. Do what only you can do. Let Jesus alone be glorified. And for all you do, I vow to return all the glory to you. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus precious name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a big hand and a big shout of hallelujah. You may please be seated. I welcome every one of us very specially to this third in the series of our covenant day of open doors and today will answer to its name in your life. In the precious name of Jesus. Unlocking the supernatural, and this is part three. Unlocking the supernatural. I'd like us to begin this afternoon with this very, very crucial statement that I believe will set things in order. The supernatural is unlocked. By the word we receive, believe, and obey, which God confirms into signs and wonders. The supernatural is a realm that is only unlocked by the word we receive, the word we believe, and the word we obey which God confirms into signs and wonders. John chapter 1 at verse 12. For as many as received him, to them gave him power to become or manifest or operate in dimensions of the supernatural. So the supernatural is unlocked first by the word we receive. Now the word we believe. Blessed is she that believeth. For there shall be a performance of those things, no matter how unreal they are, which were told her of the Lord. Receive, believe, now obey. Whatever he tells you to do, no matter how ridiculous it is, in it is the miraculous. John chapter 2 at verse 5. So when we are talking of unlocking the supernatural, we are talking about unlocking it by the word we receive, the word we believe, the word we obey, which God confirms into signs and wonders. Get ready for it this week. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what is out of the natural, in this season of the supernatural, you will have it as a very clear testimony. 
So the supernatural is simply a product of our obedience of faith. Whatever it tells you to do, if you do it, then you will do what you cannot do. When you do what you can do, God easily steps in to do what you cannot do. The supernatural is a realm, a dimension that involves divinity. When humanity does his own part and commits divinity to do his own part, then the supernatural is born. I'm speaking to somebody here in this fourth service who must have a miracle this week. This week, it will take place in your life. I don't know about you, perhaps you don't need one this week, but there is somebody in this fourth service who this week must not end without a miracle. The supernatural will take place in your life this week. But please hear this. It is the knowledge of who we are <laughs> that determines what we can think, what we can say, what we can do, and what we can ultimately become. The knowledge of who we are. No wonder the number one threat of the enemy is a threat of our identity. If you don't lose your identity, you will operate in the reality of the supernatural. There is an identity to have. There is an identity not to lose. There is an identity to remain conscious of in order to operate in this dimension of the supernatural. And that's what we are looking at this morning. Two among other identities. Who am I? Number one, you will love this. I am redeemed an heir of God and joint heir with Christ. I am redeemed an heir of God and joint heir with Christ. That is to say, I am truly, not just by name or emblem, a child of God. And I'm not just a child or distant child. I am a real child, hear this, in the nuclear family of God. That is what a joint heir is. Firstborn, having the same right as secondborn. Second, having the same right as third. Fourth, having the same right as the third. But it's different where you are talking about cousins. We are no longer strangers. We belong to the same family. No wonder it says you are not just heir of God because that is, that is unlimited in its own. But now you are joint heir with Christ. I value you like I value Christ. Everything I placed on Christ is stamped on you. If I sent him, I am sending you. Sending you how? With the same capacity, same authority, same ability to do what no wonder Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do. And greater works than this shall you do because I go to the Father. So I am redeemed an heir of God and joint heir with Christ. Romans chapter 8, please, verse 17 to 19. And then if we can, we'll read verse 20 to 22. Romans chapter 8, verse 17. Romans 8, 17. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God. And look at this. Shout it with me. Joint heirs. Say joint heirs. Louder, please. Louder, please. Joint heirs with Christ. So you can picture yourself holding the arm of Christ and saying, we are brethren. We are brothers. We belong to the same family. Therefore, we have the same capacity. We have the same authority. Joint heirs with Christ. And if it be that we suffer with him, then we may also be glorified. I don't know what you are going through, but that suffering will end in glory. I thought I would hear the loudest. Amen. Please, verse 18. Romans chapter 8, verse 18, please. Verse 18. Romans 8, verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Now hear me. Every mockery around your life and my life shall be turned into glorious testimonies. And look at verse 19. I love that for the earnest expectation of the creator are waiting for the manifestation of the sons or the joint heirs or the heirs of Christ. The world is saying where are the sons of God? 
But hear me in the name of the Lord Jesus. By the word we receive, the word we believe, the word we obey. Indeed, our world will reckon that the true sons of God have arrived. Did I hear somebody's loudest amen? A stronger amen. And if you keep reading verse 20 all the way to 22, please, if you have that verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him that subjected him in hope. Verse 21. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God, of the children of God. Now, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travelleth in pain until now. But now that the sons have arrived, every pain in our environment, every tear in our environment, every tear, pain, crying around us, every hope that seems lost by your arrival and my arrival in this month of the supernatural, everything shall be turned around. Let me hear the loudest amen. That means I am redeemed to live in the supernatural naturally. Hear me. I don't have to practice it. If it is in me, it comes out without practice. Are you following what I'm saying? A man doesn't have to practice how to be a man. A woman doesn't have to practice how to be a woman. A child of God doesn't have to practice how to act like God. Because on a normal day, we are imitating him. We have hung around him long enough that we display him. We speak like him. We act like him. We talk like him. We move like him. Therefore, we command results like him. I'm speaking to somebody here. As I heard that prophetic word in the first service from God's servant, these next seven days shall be days of victory. I want somebody to shout and exclaim the loudest amen. No wonder I said, I and the children that the Lord has given unto me, we are for signs and wonders. When you appear, they shouldn't look for a sign. You are a sign. When you appear, they shouldn't have to look for a wonder. You are a wonder. When you appear, they shouldn't have to look for a miracle. You are a miracle. When you appear, they shouldn't have to look for great things. Great things happen upon your appearance. I'm speaking to somebody who must get angry at your dimension, angry at your level, angry at your status. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you and I, as we see it happening here, we begin to manifest the supernatural. Say with me, I am redeemed an heir of God. And a joint heir with Christ. I thought somebody would say it louder. I am redeemed an heir of God. And a joint heir with Christ. So where darkness is, is where we shine. Where challenges are, is where we thrive. Where defeat is, is where we win. So whatever the circumstance is around you, you were custom made and designed for it. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? You were custom made and designed for it. No matter what you are going through, never let the devil see you shed a tear. A tear means defeated. A laughter means victorious. For he that sitteth in the heavens, who is seated above, far above principalities and powers, what shall he do? What shall he do? Laughter is one of the strengths of the believer. He said, neither be ye sorrowful, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. I am redeemed and heir of God. <laughs> if you are looking for God, look at me. That's what the word says. Don't matter or don't mind what religion says. If you are looking for God, look at me. If you are wondering what God will do, watch what I do. That's what Jesus is saying. So when you are moving, don't see yourself as a limited being. You are unlimited in capacity because you are heir of God and joint heir with Christ. Will I have you please say with me, I belong to the family of God. Now, I am a member of the nuclear family of God. I'd like you to say it with confidence. I am a member of the nuclear family of God. 
What is God saying? You are not a far cousin. You are not a far brother. You belong to the very family. Joint heir with Christ. Joint heir with Christ. <laughs> Number two. Who am I? Because you see, if you watch the temptation of Jesus very well, it was all about identity. If you are. So the challenges of life are simply, my God, challenging your identity. When sickness comes, sickness is saying, who are you? <sighs> when stagnation tries to stare you in the face, it's saying, who are you? When death comes knocking at the door, death is saying, who are you? And this leads us to number two. I am redeemed to have dominion over death. I am redeemed to have dominion over death. I determine when, when to go. That is dominion. Paul the apostle said, I do not know whether to go now or to go later. Maybe for your sake I may stay now. Somebody shout dominion. Louder, let me hear you shout it, dominion. dominion. The loudest you can, let me hear you scream it, dominion. dominion. Now, what is God saying? Please listen to this very well this afternoon. The crisis you are facing now is challenging your understanding of your identity. Name it, whatever it is. Untimely death, an unknown sickness or disease. A satanic plot from hell is simply saying, do you know who you are? And if you don't know who you are, like we've had God's servant, Bishop David Abiyo, say many times, Satan will tell you who you are not. Don't exchange your real identity for a false, imposed identity. The way you look at yourself now is it how the world sees you. So you have victory over death. Say with me, I have victory over death. I'd like you to say it and let death hear you speak. As you are saying it, you're also covering your children. Let me hear you scream it. I have victory over death, over death, over death. Anyone under your roof, below you, you should determine their departure. I have victory over death. Now, what does the scripture say to point to that identity? Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19. I call heaven to record this day. I like us to take the scripture very, very potently. Not this day, 21st of May. I call heaven and earth to record this day, 21st May, 2023, against you that I've said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. That both you, and look at this, your children, your seed may live. Somebody shout, I choose life. I'd like us to be very aggressive in this fourth service. It's the final service of the day. Let me hear you scream, I choose life. <laughs> Louder again, I choose life. <laughs> so Satan can put on you what you didn't choose. And God is saying, I record this day. And this is 12.38 p.m. West African time. I record this day. I said before you life and death. I want somebody to shout, I choose life. Please scream that and scare every sickness in your body. I choose life. Over that sickness, over that disease, over that cancer, over that arthritis, over that demon. What are you saying? I choose life. Therefore, as you have said it, None of us here shall die before our time. Let me hear you shout the loudest. Amen. 
Hebrews chapter 2 on this subject of dominion over death. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and verse 15. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself partook of the same that through death Jesus died for me. So through death he might destroy him who has the power over death. So the power over death has been taken from the enemy. What then does the enemy have to take anyone's life? The fear of death. The fear. The fear. He said through fear. Through fear of death. Through fear. Verse 15. And deliver them who through fear of death. Now, please hear this. Fear is very dangerous because it can hold a man or woman or a family for their whole life. Through the fear of death. Look at this. Where all of their lifetime subject to bondage. Nothing holds a man captive like fear. Therefore, in this fourth service, by all the forces that back up this commission, I decree every trace of fear in anyone's life is paralyzed now. Yeah. Woo! Every trace of fear, every seed of fear, every fruit of fear that is already growing, I decree in the name of the Lord Jesus that victory of fear is caused in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I have dominion. Over death. So you can go home and write when you want to go. 120, give it a date. Some are saying 120, what is the date? Be specific. I am not going anywhere and don't look like you are going anywhere. Plan for the future. The devil is telling you one lie or the other. Go to the drawing board and plan. Allocate that member of the family, that father, that mother, that brother, that sister. Allocate what will be coming to them. The devil says five years, plan 10 years. Plan 15, plan 20, plan 40, plan 60. Who through the fear of death? We heard one testimony from the resident pastor. I believe that's in the third service of a man. This was shared in the WSF meeting of a man who was told he had COVID. The moment he heard he had COVID, especially in the West, COVID carried so much weight there. The man immediately, his system began to shut down. And so they called an ambulance, picked him in the ambulance. And the, you know, the, the, the medical team there felt, let's carry out another COVID test. They carried out another test and discovered that the previous test was false. How many people have died on a false test? And suddenly, they discovered it was false. The man immediately system jacked back to life. He came out of the ambulance, entered his car, and drove his car home. I was told of a man, I don't know how true this story or testimony is, he was given seven days to leave. That his case was so critical. There was nothing the doctors could do about it. So they said, go home, prepare your house, let them know you are going in seven days. Immediately he left the hospital, everything began to die in him. First day, second day, third day. Now Friday leading to the Sunday that he should die. The hospital called back and said, are you Mr. So-and-so? He said, yes. He said, sorry, we want to inform you. The report we gave to you before was not your own. Immediately, everything dying in him came back to life and still alive and well. Now hear me and hear me well. Whose report will you believe? It doesn't matter what report may have come to you from a man. Let man be man and let God be God. Let God be true and let every devil be a liar. Are you hearing what God is saying? You and I shall fulfill our days. Let me hear the loudest amen. Let me hear the strongest amen. I heard in the first service, in the second service, God's servant said, no one here will bury their children or their grandchildren. 
Now hear me, I'm repeating the same decree that came over us in the first service. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every devil trying to take or subtract any member of your family, that devil has already failed. In the name of Jesus. So I am redeemed and heir of God and joint heir with Christ. Jesus praying, he said, let them know that you love them. As you love me. Ooh, the same love. Excess love. Abundance of love. Is available. I belong to the family of God. I am a nuclear member. That, that, that word is very important. Because in Africa you may have, this is your cousin, but it's your brother. Now this is nuclear, nuclear, nuclear member of God's family. I'm not an extended member. I am a nuclear member. Isaac, last name, God. I am a nuclear member of the family. Never exalt your family last name above your spiritual family last name. We are sons of God. And the whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Thank God for your family last name. But don't remember your real last name. Victory. 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 So I am redeemed. An heir of God, joint heir with Christ. Two, I am redeemed to have dominion over death. Is anyone going anywhere now? Let me hear you scream, I'm not going anywhere. Say it and challenge that challenge. One more time with every audacity. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here till I fulfill my days. Every member of my family till they fulfill their days. My children till they fulfill their days. Grandchildren till they fulfill their days. Oh, get ready for a great grandchildren until they fulfill their days. Now, unlocking the supernatural by the power of the Holy Ghost. This is very crucial for us today because the Holy Ghost is the grand commander of the supernatural. Anyone who operates in that dimension, I submit to you a secret. They know the Holy Ghost personally. The Holy Ghost is the grand commander, chief executive officer of the department of the supernatural. If you want to enter into a dimension where you have things the way you want it, then flow with the Holy Ghost. He will tell you things. He will show you things. He will empower your tongue. Is that not what happened when God's servant went upon the mountain and said, Lord, show me the secret of the, 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 the prophetic secret of Ezekiel. And he went praying. The rain beat him. The sun came dried up. And as he was struggling to come down this mountain, he said, now I have touched your tongue with the coal of fire. He doesn't only show you. He doesn't only teach you. He touches you. And when the Holy Ghost touches you, any part of your body, if it's your tongue, what you say, you have it. If it's your hand, what you touch changes. Any part of your body it takes hold of becomes a supernatural rod for signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Holy Spirit reveal himself to you. In Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 30, Joel chapter 2, verse 20, oh my God, Joel 2, verse 28, it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. That includes Isaac and your sons, including my children, my daughters, shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Look at verse 29. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days I will pour out my spirit. Nobody left out. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood, fire, pillars of smoke. 
I perceived something. I heard it very clearly while God's servant Bishop Abiyo was ministering. Heard it while God's servant, our father Bishop Oedeko was ministering. Heard it while our resident pastor was ministering. Now get ready for it. We will defile all odds in these last days. Things that they say are impossible because of our partnership with the Holy Ghost they will begin to happen on their own accord. Let me hear the loudest, amen. Let me hear the strongest, amen. No wonder when the Holy Ghost came down in Acts chapter 2, filled the upper room, touched them in the upper room, or not only on their head, but also touched their tongue. When Peter began to speak, fire came. In chapter 3, they saw the man at the beautiful gate immediately commanding the supernatural. Chapter 5, just for lying, Ananias and Sapphira were struck dead. There is a realm you walk with the Holy Ghost that opposition becomes afraid of you. But it is a process. They were killed for just lying. And Peter said, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? That is a realm of, 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 of intimacy with the Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are getting to that realm. So we must continue to desire an increase in our level of anointing. A killer of progress in the school of the supernatural, follow me, is satisfaction. The moment you are satisfied with where you are, growth has stopped. The moment you think you have arrived, there is no more room for departure to another realm. Satisfaction is a killer. Satisfaction stagnates in the school of the supernatural until you thirst for more, you yearn for more, you long for more, you pant for more. There is no room for growth. Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 1 to 5, we see the thousand cubit dimension. Thousand cubit, first to the brim of the water. Thousand cubit, then another thousand cubit, then another thousand cubit, then another thousand cubit, till it gets to a realm that cannot be passed over. Don't let tradition deceive us. Don't let environment deceive us. If we follow the word, many of us have not even started yet. It takes a hunger. It takes a longing. It takes a thirsting. For more and more and more. Isaiah 63 verse 1 to 3. For more and more. Acts chapter 4 verse 30 to 33. They went again. The place was shaken again. And they were refilled again. Our level of anointing therefore. Is what determines our level of command of the supernatural. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Acts 10 38. Who went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Christ commanded the supernatural all through. Because God gave him the Holy Spirit without measure. John chapter 3 verse 34. But that was Christ. We need to keep pressing for more. The next thousand cubits. The next thousand cubits. See that as the next level. And then the next level. And then the next level. And then the next level. Until Jesus comes. We must keep pressing and pressing. Somebody shout with me, I press. Louder again in the fourth service, I press. Loudest again, I press. But our... Authority to command signs and wonders is based on our commitment to serve God in three dimensions. One, serving him in kingdom advancement prayers. It is not strange. It is those that pray for the kingdom that partake of what the kingdom delivers. If you pray for the kingdom and our kingdom is supernatural, what happens? You begin to operate in dimensions of the supernatural. You are praying, Lord, let the people come. You are praying, Lord, let it be like fire shut up in the bones of everyone preaching. You are praying, Lord, just one word. You know, one word can change a man's world. One word. One word. Jesus looked at Peter. Peter said, if it is you, tell me to come. 
Jesus, one word, come. And Peter walked on water. One word that is tailor-made, designed, bespoke for you. It comes like an arrow from the altar. It locates you where you are seated and transmits the same dimension of fire into you. One word. That is why praying for the kingdom must be our daily lifestyle. Now, hear me. Those who prayed concerning today are first partakers of the open doors of today. Kingdom, advancement, prayers. Number two is going after the lost to the point of establishment. Thank God for going out, but we mustn't end there. We must see them established. I think that's Acts chapter 15, maybe at verse 36. He said, now let us go to everywhere where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do till they are established. And then also number three is giving to the cause of the gospel. Luke chapter 9, verse 1 to 6. Pushing the advancement of the kingdom. If you are enabled, enabled to build rural churches. If you are enabled, enabled to, pre, you know, to, to repair area facilities. If you are enabled, whatever dimension you are enabled to, you are given towards the cause of the kingdom. It is those who give towards the kingdom that the kingdom pays back. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you and I shall indeed operate in this realm of the supernatural. Let me hear the loudest. Amen. Today being our covenant day of open doors and also our special anointing service, let's understand that it is the anointing of the Holy Spirit that opens up impossible doors. By the anointing coming on your head and my head in this fourth service of today, every impossible door that must open this week shall be opened in the name of Jesus. Let me hear the loudest. Amen. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 to 3, the Lord said to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden. He said to subdue nations before him, I will loose the loins of kings and open before him the two-leaved gates and the gates shall never be shut. I thought somebody would shout amen. He said, I will go before thee. That's what the anointing does. I will make crooked places straight. God is saying, I've gone ahead of you this week. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. So if the doors refuse to open, God is saying, I will break them. I will break in pieces the gates of bars and cut in sunder the bars of iron. If the door sees the Almighty and refuse to open, then the Almighty will break kick it open, break it open, cut it open. Whichever way the door cannot resist the almightiness of the almighty. I speak to somebody here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By this holy anointing oil on this third in the series of covenant of open doors. However the door must open, they will open for you this week. Let me hear the loudest. Amen. Our prayer, therefore, should be, among other things, Lord, empower me to next levels. Empower me to next levels. There are doors that will only open when you are empowered to that dimension of the door. Empower me, Lord, to next levels. Empower me. Empower me. Empower me. By the anointing oil coming upon my head, Lord, empower me. I am tired of this dimension. I can't remain here after 10 years of being in Christ. I can't be at this dimension where circumstances dictate what happens to me. I am tired of being here. <laughs> Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. The angel said, you, you are not the one to tell me what to do. We determine what to do. Jo Jacob said, now we'll hold you. The angel said, if you hold me, I will break your tie. He said, give me my life, take my tie. If it takes you losing sleep for it, it is worth it. If it takes you losing friends for it, it is worth it. 
If it takes you burning the midnight candle, it takes you sleeping on the ground to get it. You don't get empowered on the bed. There are, there are realms you cannot touch until prices have been paid. Woo! That is how it works in the kingdom. It is not, oh Lord, empower me alone. What must I do to be empowered? Number one, the next level anointing can only be put into new wine skins. New wine skins. That is where the fear of God becomes your emblem. We should walk with God to the point where our only description is Isaac fears God. God walks with that man. Hear what the scripture says. The Lord walking with them. Can God walk with a filthy vessel? Can God walk with a dirty vessel? So the supernatural and the next levels we are praying for will require next levels new wine skin. Luke chapter 5, verse 37 to 38. New wine skin. Next levels of purity. Next levels. Where you go beyond the dimension of you ensuring people do not hear you say negative things, but you are careful to think negative things. It's a realm. New wine skins is not talking about other people's description of who you are but God's description of who you are. It is not he that commended himself that is approved, but he whom the Lord commended. If God cannot say your skin is ready, then forget new wine. New wine must be put in new wine skin. So number one, the next level anointing can only be put in new wine skins. That is the fear of God being a covenant requirement. And then finally, number two, the next level anointing demands a thirst and a longing. Oh Lord, my God, Early will I seek thee. My soul tested for thee. My flesh longed for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory. Not just in the sanctuary but in my own habitation. A thirst. There is no way to describe a thirst. There is no way to explain a thirst. You only know the definition of thirst when you are thirsty. If you are truly thirsty for God, you will know. It burns within you. You are woken up, hungry for God. Tap you are in the middle of the night and the first thing that comes is you blasting in tongues. A hunger, a longing for more of God. God never forces anything including new anointing on anyone. If the anointing must be new, then the test must be new. It's available. Why is it not yet obtainable? The thirst and the longing is missing. There is nothing in this book that is a lie. Everything documented there is a reality. But it takes a hunger, a thirsting, a longing. Permit me to add, a desperation, a perspiration. I, I must change dimensions. I must change. I am not satisfied. And hear me, when you begin to cry for more, many times, many people are disturbed. Because your hunger is disturbing. Your longing is disturbing. Your thirst is disturbing. But it is required for you to step into new dimensions of the supernatural. Hear me, from the words of God's servant. If at a point they had to mock him, until people mock you, you can't be made. 
until your environment cannot handle you, then you are not ready for new dimensions. This is how it works in the kingdom. Therefore, we should all expect great and effectual doors to be opened to us today as the anointing oil destroys every barrier across our paths. And somebody who believes will shout the loudest, Amen. Amen. For it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And then he went on to say, for a great and effectual door is open unto me. But there are many adversaries. So if the doors are opening, we are now being empowered to deal with the adversaries at the open door. In the name of Jesus, the door open to you and I. We will not be scared of walking through that door. And somebody that believes God will shout the loudest, Amen. Shout with me, I am walking through my open door. I'd like you to shout it a minute. I'm walking through my open door. One more time. I'm walking through my open door. Give the Lord a big hand and a shout of hallelujah. So unlocking the supernatural is by the word we receive, the word we believe, the word we obey, which God confirms as signs and wonders. We are not signs and wonders until we have a revelation of our identity. I am redeemed and heir of God, joint heir with Christ. I am a member of the nuclear family of God. I am redeemed to have dominion over death. It is the fear of death that kills, not the power of death. There is the triumph of faith over the power of death. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Then we went on to say, we unlock the supernatural by the power of the Holy Ghost, who is the grand commander of signs and wonders. Praying, kingdom advancement prayers, going after the lost to the point of establishment, and giving towards the enlargement of kingdom expansion is our ways that we are given the authority to walk in this dimension. We've also said, impossible doors, Asian doors, are openable, destroyable by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, get ready. This week, this week shall be filled with open doors. <laughs> Lift your hands and let's appreciate him. Let's give him the praise. Let's give him the glory. Let's give him all honor. Somebody bless his name. What a day. Hallelujah. What a day. Bless his name. Glorify him. Father, we honor you. To you alone be all praise and glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Did I hear a supernatural amen? It all begins by getting a true identity in Christ. For as many as received him, to them gave he power to become members of the family. This afternoon, the clarion call is this. If you are yet to accept Jesus, you are yet to receive him. Not that it was forced on you. You received him out of your own way. You are yet to receive him as Lord and Savior over your life. This is an opportunity to do so right now. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be born again. I want my name written in the book of life. I want to be a member of the nuclear family, not an observer from far. I want to walk in this dimension, but I have been separated from God. Why not? You can receive Jesus in one minute as your Lord and your Savior. That is you. You are saying, I want Jesus in my life as my Lord, my Savior, my healer, and everything that I ever need. Can I ask you right now, stand on your feet very boldly, wherever you are, across the faith tabernacle in this fourth service. Somebody stand up. You are saying, that is me. I'm giving my life to Jesus. I am surrendering my life to him. I want to become, that's right, more people are standing up. Clap your hands as they stand up everywhere. Every one of us made this decision one day. You are making that decision right now. Also, you are here, you want to rededicate your life to Christ. The joy of salvation is missing. 
The peace of salvation is missing. The fire of salvation is missing. Everything seems to be going down, burning low in your life. You are saying, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I once gave my life to Jesus, but I have been far away from him. Now I want to walk close to him, wherever you are. Can I ask you also, join us, stand on your feet at this moment. You are rededicating your life to Jesus. And we'll pray for these two groups of my precious brothers and sisters at this moment. Clap your hands as they stand everywhere, all across the faith tabernacle. Giving your life to Jesus, rededicating your life to him. Please stand up right now. Please place your right hand on your chest. And let's pray this very simple prayer of faith together. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a child of God. Jesus, today I confess that you are my Lord and my Savior and that my sins are now forgiven and that my name is now written in the book of life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For saving me, in Jesus' name, amen. Keep your hands on your chest while I pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for my precious brothers and sisters that have made this decision today to serve you. Made this decision today to become a member of your family. Let this decision they have made today, upon the confession of their faith, remain for life in the name of Jesus. When you shall return in your glory, none of us shall be missing in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Open your eyes and say with me, I am now born again. Congratulations. Please make sure you fill the form given to you by officials. And very shortly, we'll be getting back to you. Please be seated. Now, make sure that after the service is over, you take that card given to you, special new converts card, to any of the new converts tent around the tabernacle. And as you do so, you are asking them to hand over to you our special gift from the church. We are giving to you gifts that will help establish you in the faith and keep you going for life. Please make sure you do so. Also, we have our Believers Foundation class that takes place every single Monday. Please ensure that you are a part of this coming Monday, which is tomorrow, between 6 to 7.30 p.m. You only have to take this for two Mondays as the case is. Now, if for any reason your job or your responsibilities may not allow you to make it to any of the closest centers, you can take that website down, bfc.lfcww.org, and then you are able to have an online version of the class. Jesus is Lord. Anyone set to walk through open doors, as a supernatural being. Will I please have you rise on your feet this moment and begin to speak to the Lord. Lord, this is my week of walking through my open doors because I now understand my identity. Lift up your voice as we speak to the Lord and we receive God's servant. Will somebody clap some more for the Lord? He's worthy of our praise. God deserves a bigger clap for all of the blessing we have received. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout, I am a joint heir of Christ. Shout again, I have dominion over death. Make that very clear right now. What you have said is what God has confirmed. You will never be a victim of untimely death in your life. No more will you suffer loss of any soul before their time in your family. In the precious name of Jesus. For the impactful word we have received in this service again, let us give God a very big hand of praise. And please be seated. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I've been thoroughly blessed. And I believe you are living here not the same way you came in, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Very shortly, we are going to be receiving the anointing, which is the door opening power. Just as we have received it from the word a little while ago, no door 
shall be shut against you anymore. If you believe it, respond with a louder amen. amen. But before we take the anointing, please note that every redeemed child of God is ordained to enjoy open door as a way of life. Not that the door is open to you today and then tomorrow it is shut again. As a way of life, everywhere you step into, God wants you to have an open door. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 11. And thy gates shall be opened continually. For how long? Say it if you believe it. For how long shall your doors be opened? Thy gate shall be opened continually. And I mean they shall not be shut day nor night. That men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles. So it's not just open door, but busy open doors. Busy open doors. Open door with activities. Now you have to understand that very clearly. There are doors that are just open. Nothing is happening. That's not what God is talking about. He said, they shall bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles. They'll be bringing things. What validates open doors is activity. Positive activity. Things going in, things going out. Positive activity. That their kings may be brought to you. Watch out. This week, things will be brought to you. And if you look at Isaiah chapter 45, it's repeating the same thing. Did not just open door, but open doors with activity. Thus here the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I've holding, to subdue nations before him, and I will lose the loins of kings. You can see the activity. I will lose the loins of kings. I will make kings to be afraid. It will look like the trouser is almost falling by reason of the urgency of what they should do, to open before thee the two leaf gates, and thy gates shall not be shut. Thy gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked place straight. I will break the pieces of uh, pieces. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Someone say amen to that. And look at that. When the doors are open, I will give you the treasures of darkness. Somebody shout, I receive it. The hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord which called thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. You will not have empty open doors. In Revelation, Jesus crowned it. Chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. He has a key. He opens, no man can shut. He shut, no man can open. And in verse 8, he says, I know your works. You have little strength. You couldn't open the door by yourself. But there are two things that you did which are the anchor for continuous open door. Thou hast little strength. But you have kept my word. The number one anchor to open door is keeping the word, obeying the word. Giving respect to the word. And the second one, you have not denied my name. Every keeper of the word keeps his doors open. He keeps his door open. Doors are never shut against keepers of the word. John 14, 21. This is very critical as we prepare ourselves for the anointing. 14.21, he that hath my commandment and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Myself and my father will manifest to him. Same thing almost repeated in verse 23. Keepers of the word will always keep their doors open. Keepers of the word will always keep their doors open. And what more did he say? He said, because you have not denied my name. You have identified with me. Matthew 10.33. 
If you deny him, he will deny you. If you identify with him, he will identify with you. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father, which is in heaven. If you don't want the father to deny you of your open door, don't deny him before men. Be bold enough to let people know you are a child of God, that you are a Christian. There are people today when they travel and they are in some class in the air, maybe business class or some class, they give them wine and they drink. They just look this way, look that way. Nobody is saying you are blessed. He quickly drinks it. <laughs> a number of times I've been offered such things. This is, no, I'm not taking. Why? I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. We don't take this. Many have denied the name of the Lord and so have been denied their open doors. They come to church. They still go somewhere else to take charms. In the name of respect for his parents, he, takes, he uses charms. There are many in the church who come to church on Sunday, Monday or Saturday before Sunday is in a club drinking to stupor. He cleans his mouth. When he's coming to church on Sunday, nobody knows that he has drank something. There are many who come from some places, women who come from some places on Saturday, they sleep in some place on Saturday that is not their place and come to church on Sunday. Look very pious. They are denying the name of the Lord. Anything you do that makes people ask, are you a Christian? You're already denying the name of the Lord. It's time for us to stand for Jesus so that he can stand to open the door for you and I. This is the reason why many doors have been shut against us because we are denying the name of the Lord. I know you have little strength, but you have kept my word. You have not denied my name. A number of people perhaps here this morning, we need to repent. We need to repent of how we have denied the name of the Lord so that he can show us mercy and open the door. Because the anointing will work only for those who have kept their wine skin clean as we received in the word this morning. When Samson defied himself, the anointing left him. He didn't know when the spirit of God left him. He defied himself. He toyed with sin. He ended as a toy in the hand of the devil. None of us here will end as a toy. I said none of us will end here as a toy in the hand of the devil. The treasure of God became a game player. Somebody they couldn't move close to. They invited them to be playing game for them. In the hall. Because he toyed with sin, he became a toy in the hand of the devil. Very shortly, we are going to be receiving anointing. And we will pray again, asking for a cleansing of our wine skin so we can be fit for new wine. Cleansing of our wine skin so we can be fit for new wine. I know somebody here this morning will receive the new wine. You will receive the new wine. You will receive the new wine. In the precious name of Jesus. Shall we rise to our feet? And get our bottles of oil ready. As we are doing that, I'd like you to first of all pray for a cleansing. A cleansing. Holy Spirit, cleanse me by your fire. Holy Spirit, cleanse me by your fire. Now, this is the kind of prayer many people don't take serious. You have to take it serious. Before you pray for endowment, pray for a cleansing. Cleanse me from every filthiness, Everything that may serve as entrance to the flow of fresh oil. Cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse my eyes. Cleanse my mind. Cleanse my thought. Cleanse my mouth. Cleanse my hand. Touch me with the coal of fire on my tongue this morning. Somebody pray. Pray right now. Let a fresh coal of fire be taken from the altar this morning. From this anointing. To cleanse my tongue. To make me fit for this fresh oil. 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 In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. And it shall come to pass in that day, according to Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, 
the burden upon the soldier shall be taken away. Everything that has constituted to be a burden on your soldier shall be taken away. Now let your amen show that you believe. And the yoke from off your neck. The yoke from off your neck. Some unwanted habits that has held down your neck. The scripture says today that it shall be taken off your neck. The burden of debt that has held down your neck. The word of God says today it shall be taken off from you. The fear of death that have ravaged your family. The scripture says by this anointing today it shall be taken off your neck. The family crisis that have torn apart your home. By this anointing it shall be taken away today. Whatever oppression you have suffered in your life. By this anointing it shall be taken away. Will somebody articulate that prayer right now? Whatever has been a burden, you wake up. That's the first thing you think about. You are lying down. That's the thing that is holding you down. You are going out. That is the fear of what is holding you down. Begin to tear them into pieces. Begin to declare by the anointing, I receive liberty from this body. I receive liberty from this yoke. By reason of the anointing, I receive my freedom. I receive my freedom. I receive my freedom. Somebody pray loud. Pray strong. Give expression to your desperation this morning or this afternoon as you pray. You are receiving it right now. You are receiving it right now. You are receiving it right now. You are receiving your freedom from the fear of death. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Lift up your right hand before we receive the touch of the oil. I decree that the forces that back up this commission goes to work in your favor right now. No door has ever been shut against this church and this ministry. And because you are a member of this family, no door shall be shut against you anymore. No door shall be shut against you anymore. In every nation we have been to, doors always fling open to us. From today, in your business, in your career, as a professional, no door shall be shut against you anymore. Everywhere we turn, things turn around for us in this commission. Therefore, I decree that everywhere you turn, locally and internationally, everything will be turning in your favor. In your family, everything will be turning in your favor. For your children and grandchildren, everything will be turning in your favor. For your spouses, everything will be turning in your favor. From today, no one will turn you down from your heart's desires. I decree also by the same unction on this altar that every threat of death over you or your family members be ended today. Those who are waiting to see your death will go before you. I say they will go before you. Those who shut one door against you will find you receiving seven other open doors. Those who say, let's see what it will become. Uh, they will still be alive. They will see you become seven times of what they think you will never become. If you believe, let your amen shake the devil out of place. Now bring up your bottle of oil. If you can raise it up. We declare that the content of this bottle in your hand becomes holy anointing oil. And as a priest, you are holding this anointing oil this morning. I declare that this becomes your point of sanctification. 
it also becomes your point of contact for empowerment. As this oil comes on you today, fresh oil, fresh empowerment, higher dimension of empowerment, resulting to new open doors in your life. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. By the reason of this oil, new doors will be opening to you. After Saul was anointed, doors were opening to him in quick succession. By this anointing, therefore, quick succession open door is your portion. A great door, an effectual, is open before you. By this anointing, every adversary that stands on the way to your open door shall be fully destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Now, take a portion of this on the tip of your finger because it's going on you right now as a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. Place it on your forehead and pray in the language of the Spirit beyond what you can say, beyond what you can explain in your own human language. Raise your voice right now. Raise your voice. Raise your voice. Begin to declare what this will result to. The anointing always results into something. Declare what it should result into. Send it on an errand. Declare what you want this to be. Upon your head, upon your life, declare it. Declare it. And God is confirming 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 it. Lord along the league, like to know Shaktana Dada, Randa Klang Dodo Sam. Somebody is receiving healing right now. Somebody is receiving liberty right now. Somebody's yoke is being broken. Somebody's addiction is being destroyed. That's you, that's you, that's you, that's you, that's you. You will have a testimony to share this week. That's you, that's you, that's you. Thank you, mighty Father. In the name of Jesus. It is done. It is done. Just as you have placed your hand on your head, by this anointing, you will experience a fresh crowning of glory this week. Your forehead begins to attract favor this week. In places where they have forgotten you, they will be begging you to come. In places where they said they will not help you, they will call you to help you twice. Enjoy fresh open doors this week. And all the saints of God who believe say loud, Amen. As our scriptural tradition is, from Matthew chapter 3, verses 11 and 12, we will be taking a shot of the oil right now, and two things will happen. Every negative thing that is hidden in your body will be gathered. And then number two, fire will come down to consume them. So what you are taking right now is liquid fire. What are you taking right now? What are you taking right now? Every stranger that has defied medication will be gathered together and be burnt. Therefore, as you partake of this right now, it goes into action internally, touching all your organs, touching everything that medical eyes cannot see. So shall it be. Take it as a toast for your health. Just a shot of it and the miracle is established already. Thank you, Jesus. Upon taking it, start giving glory to God. Start giving glory to God. Start giving glory to God. In the precious name of Jesus. Let someone who will testify shout the biggest shout of amen. Before you close the bottle, as you go with this, everywhere you anoint, your home, your shop, your field, anywhere, including your farm, everywhere you anoint will answer with supernatural open doors. Strangers will disappear. Your miracle shall be established. In Jesus' glorious name. You can now close your bottles, raise your hand, give glory to God. He's worthy of our praise. No one like him. No one like him. 
No one like him. In Jesus' precious name. Announce to two, three people around you, you will soon hear my testimonies. Tell them very boldly, tell them very boldly, you will soon hear my testimony. You will soon hear my testimony. You will soon hear my testimony. I can see some people smiling from here to here because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Thank you, Lord. Good news. Next Sunday is the last in the series of our covenant day of open doors for the month of May. The 28th. You have been attending since the first one. Don't miss the last one. Don't miss the last one. The widest doors will be open to us next Sunday. Pick handbills as you are going through the doors. They'll give them to you. Make it a project this week. All of us, let's make it a project. The minimum one person is coming to church with you next Sunday. It's a grand finale of our open doors encounters. Don't miss it. God bless you mightily in Jesus' wonderful name. How many of us are glad to be here this morning or this afternoon? Amen. I can see you already clapping for the Lord, rejoicing in Him, rejoicing in Him. Give Him all the glory due to Him. Give Him all the praise due to Him. No one like Him. Are you still rejoicing in the Lord, everybody? Why not lift your hand to heaven? Why don't lift your hand to heaven this afternoon? Wave it to Jesus and give him glory. What an experience. What an encounter. Give him thanks for the experience you have had in his presence, for the encounter you had with his word, for the transformation that came to you by the anointing, for the impartation of grace that came upon your life and my life. Let's give God the glory. Let's give him the honor. Let's give him the adoration. Father, thank you. Blessed be your holy name. You are worthy of all the praise and you are worthy of all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Let's share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations, amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go. Be blessed as you do so. If you came after the worship offering, there are officials around the altar, carrying late offering tags. They are also around the various exits. You can do well to drop your offering as you go and be blessed as you do. Remember to pick up your flyers that you require to advertise Jesus and be blessed as you do. Please, let's clear the way quickly for the sanctuary keepers to complete the assignment. God bless you.